morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining me, Yasmin. Good morning, Emily. How are you? If you keep putting the likes, um, double tap in the screen and um, put some comments in, say hi, let me know you can hear me okay. And then we'll get this live sent out to lots more people. You got your theory at 10, have you? How are you? How are you? Um, are you? Do you feel prepared? You're saying you're nervous, Georgia. Just take five big deep breaths and do what you can do. That's all you can do now, isn't it? A bit of nerves is good. Morning, why, way good. How are you? Hi, Katty Do. Caddy Too. Kekazone. Thank you, Sarinka. Morning, Melissa. Melissa, cuckoo. Sorry, sorry, object. Hi. You feel prefer, but you struggle with the hazard perception. Okay. Um, what do you score, Georgia? Um, can you stay with me for, for for two or three minutes? What are you scoring um, in your hazard perception clips? The highest you can score is five. What do you generally score, Georgia? Georgia Fletcher. And how many times do you click the mouse? Can you answer that as well? Are you still there? Hi, Smithy Lee. Morning. Bean. Good luck for two hours. I'm sorry to hear you failed it, Niche. Um, I'm looking for Georgia's response. I can't see it, so she's possibly gone off to do some last minute preparation. I know not everybody can stay with me. So I'll just pin my link there for people that are. Um, you score two or three, okay, um, Georgia. Is that what you're saying? You score two or three. Okay, so let's go through a couple of hazard perception tips, shall we? Um, first, tip number one is you're looking for moving hazards. So can, can someone give me a clue at what kind of things you're going to click for? Because you're not going to click for signs, for road markings, for traffic lights, for roundabouts. What kind of thing are you clicking for? People, pedestrians, uh, cars, things that are gonna make you stop, swerve or slow down. And as soon as you see something that you think is going to be a hazard, click the mouse. And then when you know that thing, good, well done, Georgia, when you know that thing's gonna be a hazard, click the mouse again. And when that thing is all the way in front of you, click the mouse again. So you see somebody in a car and the car is parked and you think, I wonder if that person's gonna open the car door, click the mouse. Then they do open the car door, click the mouse again. And when they've made you stop, click the mouse again. Okay, so click at least, at least three times for every hazard, but don't click for parked cars or junctions. Make sure you're clicking for the thing that makes you stop. Does that make sense? That makes sense, Georgia. So have a go at that now. Have a go at that. But don't don't um, fuss about it too much. Your test is very, very soon. OK, so just have a practice now. And if it doesn't work, just don't worry about it. You'll get there eventually. Um, I do have a lot more I can tell you about hazard, hazard perception. But just make sure you're clicking more than once. Oh, and don't go click, 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 because that could cause you to fail. OK, does that make sense? Cool. Um, you passed yesterday with one, well, no, James Mumford, one day, I wouldn't recommend one day of revision, but congratulations, you've passed it, you've got there. Um, is it your first time watching me, anybody? Score, what does score mean, Freight Dog? Got your test tomorrow, Al, good luck for tomorrow. Let's have that with a smiley face. Let's have that comment. Got my test tomorrow with a big smiley face saying, whoop, whoop, I'm going to smash it. You seen me before? No, you've not seen me before. Your first time? Well, I am morning, Demily. Morning, my man. You failed twice by one point, then two points on a multiple choice. That's quite very, very common comment okay so have a look at the course that i've just pinned below and that will help you it will definitely help you to pass um so uh, i'll tell you who i'll tell you who i am i'm 
My name is Annie. I'm an ADI. That means I'm a, uh, a, an approved driving instructor. I've um, been, been a grade A instructor for about 10 years. I'm also on the official register for driving instructor trainers and I'm a theory test expert and I'm here today to make theory easy for you. I've created theory test course so let me just pin it there while I have a look at the quick look at this question. On the hazard clip if you click more than 10 times does it disqualify you? Um, I, I'm not going to, I haven't got a certain number MJ, awesome. I haven't got a certain number, but I would say don't click more than 10 times. That would be my advice. You don't need to. Click when you see, when you notice it and you think, oh my gosh, that person's going to step out in the road in front of me. Click the mouse. That person does step out in the road in front of you. Click again. The person's all the way in front of you and you've had to break. Click again. So for each of those times, click once or twice. And that's going to be a maximum of about six or seven clip, clicks, isn't it? So don't be clicking 10 times. There's no need. Can't I just do your theory? I'm afraid I can't just do your theory. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I've created a theory test course. Um, if you're struggling, just have a look at that pinned link. It's only £34.99, which means it's only the price of one single one-hour driving lesson. Let's go through a question. What do these road signs mean? Can you see that all of these three road signs have got a bicycle inside of them? But they all mean different things, which is why it's so important to understand the shapes and the colours of signs. So what does sign A mean? Can anybody tell me what does sign A mean? So look at the shape of the sign first and then give me what you think this sign means. Yeah, some good answers there. It's, it's, it's in the shape of a triangle, okay? And triangle signs are warning signs. What I've done there is made a triangle shape with my hands and then made that into a W shape to help you remember. So triangle signs are warning signs. Um, so that is means warning, uh, cycle, it's probably warning you, no, it is warning you about a cycle route. Let's find another warning sign. Here's another warning sign. See, it's warning you about the, 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 the could be tractors around because you're near a farm, aren't you? Um, here's another warning sign. What's this sign warning you about? What is this sign warning you about? <clears throat> Slippery roads, absolutely, well done. Slippery roads, cool. So what is sign B? What does sign B mean? So that sign is in a blue circle. What is it? What does it actually mean? Does anybody know? This is just to demonstrate that you need to know the colors and the shapes of signs I need to look at the colour and the shape before you look at what's inside. If you don't know, just put IDK for I don't know, just so I get some kind of comment. And the likes, I've got five, 6,000 likes just under already. Thank you, guys. 6,000 now. Yeah, so, so, so sign B is in a circle. Circle signs are orders. You can easily remember that if you make a circle shape with your hands and look at that, look at that shape and you can see an, an O for order. Blue circle signs are giving you um, um, a mandatory instruction. So blue must do or this road is for you. So blue signs are telling you what you must do or telling you that this road is for you. Like this one, this is a blue circle. This is telling you what you must do. You must go in the direction of the arrow. OK, so blue must do or this road is for you. So it's a cycle route. This road is a cycle route. Awesome. Now, what about the red circle? What about uh, sign C? What does this sign mean? What does sign C? Thank you for sharing. Don't forget to follow me on TikTok. You can click on this link to follow me on YouTube as well. Subscribe to me on YouTube. 
So what does sign C telling you? Like I say, if you just joined, it's just to demonstrate that you need to know the shapes and the colours of signs. They've all got bicycles inside, but they all mean different things. Uh, Fahima's got it. Yeah. So it's a red circle. So again, a circle sign is an order. You can remember that if you make a circle shape with your hand, look at your hand, you can see the shape of an O for order. And red circles are telling you what you must not do or this road is not for you. So this sign is telling you, thank you, I'm just bait. This, and thank you, Marcus. This sign is telling you no bicycles. Okay, does that make sense? Put some yeses in the comments. If that makes sense, thank you, Gorgette, Georgette, or Matthew. I'm sorry if I say your names wrong. Um, so, like I say, I want to really, really, and Rachie, thank you. I want to show you that it's really important to understand the shapes and the colours. Triangle signs are warning signs. Circle signs are orders. Red circles do not do it. Blue circles, you must do it. Blue must do this road is for you. And somebody on, thank you, Katty Do, somebody on TikTok a couple of days ago said, red O means no, and I like it. Do you like that? Thank you, Levi. Do you like that? I really like that. I wrote it down. Red, red O means no. <laughs> it's good luck for tomorrow. Thank you, JB. Let's go through another question, fight. And I hope that's made some kind of sense. And if it does make some kind of sense and you've learned something, please, if you're struggling, have a look at the pinned link because I've got my course there for you. Uh, thank you. Who's that? My biggest fan. I can't. I, thank you, Elsa. I think that says. OK, let's go through a question. What is um, what's the purpose of these yellow lines painted across the road? And I want you to remember if there's thank you, Ryan, if there's lots of paint on the road, it's there for a reason because paint costs a lot of money and a lot of time and effort and people's wages to put it on. So more paint, thank you, Sophie, more paint on the road equals more danger or more restrictions on that part of the road. Does anybody know what this sign means? These lines mean, I should say. Get my poster so I know what I'm covering today. My first lesson today is going to be crossing. So if you struggle with crossings, stay with me. Yeah, good, you're good, Stephanie, yeah, well done. Cam, Mitch, absolutely, that's exactly what it is. TikTok B, that's exactly what it is, thank you, Ryan. Yeah, these yellow lines are painted all the way across the road. Bright yellow and quite thick to make you aware of your speed, that's what they are. You're coming up to some kind of hazard and they're there to make you aware of your speed. You can see them and you can feel yourself going up, going over them, rumbling over them. So they're there to make you think, oh, I better check my speedometer, look at what's ahead of me. An extra reminder. Thank you, Penny. What do the lines in the centre of the road mean? Thank you, Levi. What do they, keep double traffic, I've got 34.8 thousand likes already, really happy. Is that a serious question? Can disabled people drive? Is that serious? Of course they can. But it would depend on um, having adaptations to the car necessary uh, if they need them. So you can overtake on this road. You can. That's not what they mean. But what does it actually mean? Orange juice, I have to have it in the mornings. It, yeah, yeah, brilliant. So lots of people getting it right there. Well done. Uh, more paint equals more danger. Someone's seen my lesson before. Um, Georgia, that's exactly it. You're well on your way to getting some good um, results today. Yeah, so they are long lines with short gaps. And that means they are hazard lines. There's more paint on the road. If the short lines and long gaps, they're just there to separate the traffic, but more paint, long lines with very short gaps, they're just, they are now a hazard line. So what are you driving towards? What could you possibly be driving towards if there's hazard lights, lines on the road? 
Don't forget to follow me, guys, and keep the likes coming. I'm loving it. You could be approaching a dip, Sarah Lou. Hello again. Thanks for joining me again. You could be approaching a bridge, Ethan. Um, what good answer. You could be approaching a narrow road, a bend, Fionn. Absolutely. Uh, hills, a blind summit, a T-junction, a dip. Brilliant answers. That's, that's a sharp turn. Good one. Keep going with the likes. Hi, Alfie. Thank you, Elsa. You could be approaching, a, yeah, a crossing. Absolutely. You're approaching some kind of hazard. So you need to check your mirrors and ease off the gas. Sharp corner, Chloe. Don't be speeding up. Don't carry on speeding up. The road always tells you what to expect. Some people will say, unexpectedly this happened. Well, there's long lines on the road. You should be expecting something. You can see, if you see a warning sign, you should be expecting something. Does that make sense? Let's go for another question. Do you know this one? Can you overtake? Yes, you can overtake. You only can't overtake from your side if it's a solid line next to you. What's the purpose of a catalytic converter? Is it to reduce fuel consumption, to reduce the risk of fire, to reduce um, harmful exhaust gases, to reduce engine wear? Do you know what's the purpose of a catalytic converter? This, this is suitable for Northern Ireland. So there's a UK theory test what I'm covering now. So if you know the answer, pop it in. If you don't know the answer, then put the letters I, D, K, meaning I don't know, or some other comment if you want to. So keep them coming in. And I'm going to explain it to you. I'm going to make it easy for you now. A mini lesson. This is a mini lesson coming up. So don't worry if you don't know. Okay, so let me show you what a catalytic converter is. This is an image of a catalytic converter. Now, driving a car is not, do you agree with me? Thank you, Kath Brindley. Driving a car is not environmentally friendly. Thank you, Sivalion. Yep, driving a car is not very environmentally friendly because harmful gases get pumped out into the environment for us to breathe in. Put a Y or a yes if you agree with me. I know, Kathleen, I know. Yet, do you agree with that? So a catalytic, brilliant. So a catalytic converter helps with that. Basically acts like a filter, says Sarah Lou. It does, basically acts like, like a filter. So the word convert, me converts, means changes. Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense. The word converts just means changes. Yeah, put some yeses in that, that's brilliant, okay. So what um, a catalytic converter does is it converts or changes dirty gases into cleaner gases. So the dirty fumes from the engine go into the catalytic converter and then come out, cleaner gases come out of the exhaust, okay? So dirty gases go in, cleaner glass gases come out. So the catalytic converter acts like a bit of a filter and takes away some of the, uh, some of the nasty stuff. Does that make sense? And that will help you just to answer this question. So those people that answered it correctly earlier, can you put it in again? And those people that said, I don't know, you do know now, don't you? What's the purpose of a catalytic converter? Is it to reduce fuel consumption, to reduce the risk of fire, to reduce harmful exhaust gases, to reduce engine wear? I know you know it now. Now that's a very simple explanation, but that's all you need to know. You might want to know more than that if you're a mechanic, but you don't need to. Dylan Dax, awesome. It's a pleasure, Maricha. So if you just think, think about that word converts, you guessed earlier, now that's what I want. I want you to say, I guessed it, but now I know it. That's awesome. The answer is to C, to reduce harmful exhaust gases. Awesome. My name is Annie. I, um, is it your first time watching me? Put some yeses in or noes in. Let me know. Got your theory booked for next month. Your lives. I help. Amy Ball, that's awesome. And I have seen you, your name before, haven't I? I'm sure I have. Lots and lots of names on here to see. If it's your first time watching me, let me tell you who I am again. Lots and lots more people on here. Um, so my name is Annie. I'm an ADI. That means I'm an approved driving instructor. 
I've been a grade A driving instructor for about 10 years. I'm also on the official register for driving instructor trainers. And that means I train people to become driving instructors. Um, I spend more of my time now um, being a theory test expert. So I run a driving school in Cheshire, but I'm a theory test expert online so I can help thousands of people to get prepared for and pass their theory test because I saw how many people were struggling and I started to get message after message after message saying, how can you help me? And being a primary primary school teacher and a driving instructor, I knew I could help you. So I created Theory Test Course and I do these lives. These lives are for free. My TikTok account, follow me, is for free. My YouTube channel is for free. If you want step-by-step -step guidance, thank you, Kareeb, this, this course will help you um, to pass prepare for and pass your theory test. I've been awarded most innovative driving school for it. My driving school is called Spot On Driving and I've been awarded superior achievement and excellence from a driving school. The DVSA have looked at my courses and they've decided that they really like what I'm offering and how I can help you. And they have given me all the most up-to-date questions. Uh, and what did I get? I got an awesome... Um, I think it's I think it's it's not been if not screenshot it. An awesome review uh last came through to me this morning saying I've passed because of you. Oh here you are. I would like to say thank you very much for your time and effort you put into your course. I bought it when I came across your TikTok lives, but I only had a short time before my test date. So I was still nervous that I wouldn't have enough time to learn enough. I only had chance to complete 50% of your course, but I had my theory today and passed first time with 49 out of 50 on the multiple choice questions. I will continue to complete the course as it's helped with my practical driving lessons too. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that amazing comment? So that's what, that's what this course can do for you. If you want that to be you, then please click on the link below and sign up for the course because you won't be wasting your time. Suku awesome. And you won't be wasting your money. You'll spend $34.99 and you'll have everything you need to pass. Let me, I'll tell you more later. Let me go through my first lesson of the day, which is called Crossings Made Simple. Whoever struggles with crossings questions and knowing which crossing is which and which light follows which, let me know. It's today at 1 p.m. It's, 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 you've got to decide, haven't you? It's, it's, it's um, not time to do very much, have you? Stay with me today if you can. This morning. Whoever struggles, just put a me in the comments if you ever struggle with crossings questions. Let me know what you think. Thank you, Elsa. Lots and lots of people do. I'm going to make it easy for you okay i'm going to make it easy let's let's start with a question because i like to start with a question and when, when we come back to the question you're either sure you've got it right or you know how to get it right easily every single time at a puffin crossing which color follows the green signal i fell three times I'm not over keen on taking this again, says Stacey. Stacey, I've helped people that have failed more than 20 times with this course. Um, failing it three times is not unusual at all, I promise you. So which colour follows the green signal? If you don't know, put IDK in the comments. Is it flashing amber, steady red, flashing green or steady amber? Yeah, somebody said, I've failed three times, I've failed four times. So that person I was just talking to, you're not on your own. I promise you, you're not on your own. I failed three times also. Got three kids I could really do with passing on their benefit. Yeah, the Wallace. Um, yeah, I, I, I totally understand. That's why I've done this course. That's why I've put it together so I can help you all. So to answer questions like this one, the first thing you need to know is the traffic light sequence. Which colour comes after which? Put a yes or a no in the comments if you know the traffic light sequence. If you know it, put yes. If you don't know it, put no. I failed seven times. 
absolutely i know and i could you fell by one more yesterday that's why this course is here so if you know the traffic light sequence put yes in the comments because if, if lots of people if most people do then i won't go over it i don't want to bore you with stuff but if you don't know it put no if you if you're not sure of it put no so do you know the traffic light sequence yes yes no yes no you stocky walker you don't now, let, can I go over it? I know some people already know it, but it's okay if I go over it for those people that don't know. And just keep double tapping the screen if you already know it. And I'm boring you now for a second. Because it's really important to answer questions that you know this sequence. The five steps to the sequence. So the first thing I want to tell yourself is just say to yourself, <laughs> Kathleen, just say to yourself that this is easy. I don't know it because I haven't tried to learn it. And Annie's going to teach it to me now and I will learn it because there's five steps and it's got to be super, super easy if it's only five steps. Of course I can learn it. Okay, so the sequence is, if you just watch me uh, make a fool of myself for a second, the sequence of traffic lights is red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Red, red and amber, green, amber, red. If you say it out loud, it will stay in your head. I promise you. Thank you, Elsa. I'll say it once more and then you're going to do it with me. The sequence of traffic lights is easy. It's red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Now I'm going to point and you're going to say it out loud or whisper it if you're at work or something or on the bus, okay? The sequence is easy. It's Got it? So that will stay in your head. Say it, say it again. Say it to yourself again. Red, red and amber, green, amber, red. And then when you're answering a question, just go through that routine slowly a couple of times in your head and you'll have it. It's really, really simple, I promise you. It's just you haven't tried to learn it. You can learn a nursery rhyme. You can learn the words of a song. Yeah, you can learn those five steps. Red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Say it out loud. It will stay in your head. That's what happens when we say things out loud. It goes into our head even more. You also need to know for crossings questions, any question about crossings, you need to know what the meaning of all the traffic lights are. So let's go through that with you. You know that red means stop and wait. You, Thank you, it's Danny. You know that red means stop and wait, don't you? What does red and amber together mean? You've got red, red and amber, and then green. What does red and amber together mean? Can anybody put an answer in the comments? Kira Ward, awesome. MX, cool. Becca, brilliant. Awesome, everyone putting your answers in. It's brilliant to see you being interactive. I'll tell you what it actually means in a second. Now, I'm, not, I'm asking you what it actually means. What must you do? What must you do by law? Think about that. Think about what must you do by law. And they can't tell you by law you must prepare. So, Erin's got it. What By law, what must you do when it's red and amber? Must you stop and wait or can you go? So it's one of those two. It's either stop and wait or go when it's red and amber. So prepare to go would not be law, okay? So what do you think is the safest option? Yeah, Becca Darby girl, you've got it. So red and amber means stop and wait. Stop and wait, stop and wait, go if it's safe. And then you're up to amber. You've got red, red and amber, green, amber. So that, this is called steady amber. What does steady amber mean? It comes on before the red. What does it mean? You've got it, brew, who's peer. Thank you, Lula Bell. So amber, steady amber on its own. It doesn't mean get ready to stop. It doesn't mean prepare to stop. It actually means stop and wait behind the line because red's coming on next. Okay, so amber means stop and wait. It might be that you're just on the line and you can't stop and wait. Okay, but it actually does mean stop and wait. So the only one that means go is green. 
have you got that does that all make sense to you red red and amber green amber red stop and wait stop and wait go a bit safe stop and wait stop and wait why do people drive through on amber? Why do people go faster than 70 miles per hour on a motorway? I can't answer that question. They're impatient. The only, I, don't, I won't explain it again, but what I'll say is the only one that means go is green. All the others mean stop and wait behind the line, okay? So now you know the traffic light sequence and now you know what the, each of the traffic light colors mean properly. Now you need to know the difference between the different pedestrian crossings. And I'll explain those to you now. Are you ready for me to explain them? Just put a yes in the comments if you are ready. Stop and wait behind the line, absolutely. Can my voice rest for a second? I've been on for half an hour. Thank you, Levi Scrivens. Yeah. Awesome. That's the first, th first one we're going to talk about. So stay with me while I talk about five different crossings. The first one is a zebra crossing. A zebra crossing has black and white zebra-like markings going all the way across the road, doesn't it? And it has Belisha beacons on both sides of the road. So these black and white poles with the orange um, beacons on top. It has zigzag markings um, near the crossing painted on the road. Those zigzag markings are a warning, um, but they're also to say you mustn't overtake as you're approaching the crossing. OK, so that's a zebra crossing. It's not traffic light controlled. So pedestrians would walk up to the crossing and they should have priority to cross the road. What would you do if a pedestrian is waiting at a zebra crossing but they're not crossing yet? What, what must you do? Trucker, I have just, this is the first one I'm talking about. Pelican Puffin Toucan, oh, I see, Pelican Puffin Toucan Zebra, Equestrian Tucker, Equestrian. You must wait patiently, of course you can. Why would you never wave at them to cross? So what I mean by that is go, go on, you can cross over. Go on, it's fine, go on. Why would you never do that to anybody who's waiting to cross? And it's really, really important if they get hit by a car, says Michael, or the car says Little Blue. Andrew, there might be another car coming. So if you say to somebody, go on, cross over, and they start walking across the road and then they can get hit because there's a car or a motorbike or some other vehicle that you haven't seen that comes and hits them. So you do not try to make decisions for some people, for other people. Don't ever tell other people to go. And if you do that in your driving test, telling another car to go or telling a pedestrian to go, then you likely fail your test. You can be putting them in danger. Just stop, wait, look at them and let them make their own decision. Next one, an equestrian crossing. An equestrian crossing is a traffic light controlled pedestrian crossing. It has exactly the same sequence as traffic lights. It goes red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Okay, um, an equestrian crossing is used by horse riders and pedestrians together. So the crossing might be, the crossing will be a bit wider than normal to give space for, for it. Um, no, most people haven't seen them 3224, don't worry about it. There's not many of them. Uh, an equestrian crossing would have the button that pedestrians press quite high up so people can stay on their horses. I've only seen a couple of them. There was a couple in Dorset where I lived, okay? And I didn't go to those places very often. So there's not very many of them. Okay, that's an equestrian crossing. Next one I want to talk about is a toucan crossing. A toucan crossing is a traffic light controlled pedestrian crossing with exactly the same sequence as traffic lights. It goes red, red and amber, green, amber, red. as a toucan crossing. A toucan crossing is for cyclists and pedestrians to use together. That means pedestrians can walk across the road and cyclists can cycle across the road as well. OK, they don't have to get off the bike and push the bicycle. They're allowed to cycle across the road. You can easily remember that a toucan crossing 
is for cyclists and pedestrians. If you think of the word two can, two can cross together. So just think about that, say it out loud. That will help you to know what a two can crossing is. Thank you, Gok. Oh, sun rocks. Thank you, Nibos Swirled. Okay, let's talk about a puffin crossing. A puffin crossing is another, thank you, Kath. A puffin crossing is another traffic light controlled pedestrian crossing that has exactly the same sequence as traffic lights. It goes red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Okay, a puffin crossing, it knows where Queen Precious, it knows when a pedestrian is on the crossing. It knows, so what it has is it has a sensor. Look at the arrow on this picture. It has a sensor that detects if anybody is on the crossing. And then this traffic light sequence, it might change. It might go to green a bit quicker if no one's on the crossing. So although it'll go the same sequence, it might change the sequence a bit quicker because it knows nobody is on the crossing. OK, you can easily remember that a puffin crossing. Thank you, Caroline. You can eat, Carolina. You can easily remember that a puffin crossing is the intelligent crossing that knows when someone's on the crossing and it has the same traffic light sequence. If you look at this and you see the word puff in, pedestrian, user, friendly, intelligent. OK, so the puffin is the intelligent one. Say that out loud or screenshot and tell yourself all day. Tell your family, tell your friends, tell people, say, tell your dog, tell the wall. Tell, thank you, dancing. Tell people the puffin crossing has exactly the same sequence as traffic lights. It goes red, red and amber, green, amber, red. But it's intelligent. It might change that cross, that sequence a bit quicker. There is one crossing that has a different sequence, a pelican crossing. A pelican crossing is a traffic light controlled pedestrian crossing. A pelican crossing has a different sequence. A pelican crossing goes red, flashing, amber, green, amber, red. So a pelican crossing is the one that has flashing amber. Red, flashing, amber, green, amber, red. So why would it have flashing amber? Why would it have flashing amber? Well, flashing amber means something different to red and amber or steady amber. Flashing red, red and amber means stop and wait. Flashing amber means that if someone's on the crossing, stop and wait. If no one's on the crossing, you can drive through. Flashing amber, you can keep on driving if no one's on the crossing. You must stop and wait if somebody is on the crossing. OK, wait for people to finish crossing. Absolutely. OK, so normal amber, stop and wait. Flashing amber, go if the crossing's clear. Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense. Or oh, put a yes in the comments. A yes or a thumbs up if that makes sense. That flashing amber means stop and wait if someone's on the crossing. Go if no one's on the crossing. Put a yes in the comments if you get that and it makes sense. Yeah, awesome. So what is really important to you is one, remember the traffic light sequence, two, remember what the traffic lights, the, the meaning of the traffic lights are. And three, what I would say is really, really, really important is to remember the difference between a puffin, intelligent, and a pelican, flashing. Let's come back to this question. At a puffin crossing, which colour follows the green signal? Flashing amber, steady red, flashing green or steady amber. I've got 100,000 likes already. Thank you so much. Keep them going. That'd be fantastic. Maybe I can beat my all time high today. So let's get rid of two rubbish answers. You know, and you're thinking it's either flashing amber or steady amber. Let me have a think about that. So let me get rid of steady red and flashing green so that we've got only got the answer, two possible options left. So is the puffin crossing, 
Is that the one with the same traffic light sequence or the one with a different traffic light sequence? Keep the lights coming up. You know the answer. You know the answer. And if you get it right, that's awesome. If you get it wrong, just learn from it. Let's show, show you the difference again. A puff in crossing, puff in intelligent. Yeah, puff in intelligent. Same traffic light sequence. Puff in goes red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Pelican crossing is the one that has the flashing amber phase. Red, flashing, amber, green, amber, red. So let's come back to the question and I want everyone to see what which one is the correct answer. A puffin crossing, which colour follows the green signal? I hope the traffic lights up. Which one has the flashing amber? Which one has the steady amber? So remember, remember what I said again? A puff in crossing goes red, red and amber green, amber, red, a puffin. A pelican goes red, flashing amber, green, amber, red. And this question is asking you about a puffin crossing. So which one's it talking about? Is it the flashing or the steady? Is it the flashing or the steady? You know it, absolutely. You know the answer now, it's steady. So more and more and more correct answers are coming through now. So don't rush your answer. Puffin goes red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Because what is the only crossing that has flashing amber in it? I'm trying to make it obvious. So what's the only crossing that has flashing amber in it? There's only one crossing that has flashing amber. It's pelican. And they're not talking about pelican here. They're talking about puffin. Fantastic. That's crossings made simple. And I know sometimes it takes a little bit of time to go into your head properly. And, um, yeah, I know some people are always trolling, but some people are not. Uh, so that's, that's my, that's my, um, that's my crossings made simple lesson to help you to understand. Um, and you can be able to answer numerous questions now. You'll be able to answer questions all about the traffic light sequence, all about what traffic light colours mean, and all about the different types of crossings. Why they're named after birds? I don't know, actually. Somebody Google it and tell me. Um, the official government figures are there's 1.9 million people taking the, th the, the theory test, only 879,000 passes. That means 47% of people are passing their theory test. Thank you, Ardaz, Ardza. Is that too low? Let me know. I think that's way too low. That's why I'm here. Thank you, Lee. I'm here because that pass rate is way too low. 53% of people, people are failing for all kinds of reasons. And one reason people are failing is because you get an app. Let me know if this is you. You will subscribe to an app. You go straight to the mock tests and you'll start doing mock tests to see how good you are, to see how test ready you, re you are already. Just put a yes in the comments if that's what you do, if that's what you have done. You've downloaded a, 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 um, an app and gone straight to mock tests. Put me, put the, put the word me in the comments so I can separate it from other comments. Put the word me in the comments if you have ever done that. Loads of people have. That's what people do. They don't do the learning. They go and take a test straight away because most people, um, a lot of people will say, oh, it's easy. It's common sense. Don't worry about it. Just go and take it. So they go and take a mock test. And that doesn't make sense. You don't go to college, university, and just go straight, straight to taking mock tests. You need to do the learning first. How do you do the learning? You do the learning by reading the books, talking to people, um, watching videos, signing up for a course like mine, um, reading all the question hints within the theory test. Failing is embarrassing and frustrating for so many people. So to have to say to people, I failed it once, I failed it again. I failed it again. I don't know what I'm going to do. I failed it again. It's frustrating because I've done everything. My instructor told me to go all the way through the app. 
do a mock test. I did, I passed the mock test, then I went to a real test and failed. Who's ever done that? And isn't that frustrating? Kira, have you 12.30? Good, I have a smiley face with that. Let's have a smiley face. I got my theory test, smiley face. Um, it's a waste of time, isn't it? 23 pounds every time you're taking it is such a waste of your money. You fail four times by one mark. I, I get it, I know so many people do. That's why I'm here. And you can't book your driving test until you pass your theory test. And that is really frustrating. What I want to do is teach you to pass your theory test. I can teach you to pass your theory test. I'll be doing this five times a week, at Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday mornings at nine till 12. I'll come on in the evenings when I can and go over some questions with you. I've got somebody else who's going to come on and do some lessons with you as well. Um, and I've created a course. If you want step-by-step -step health guidance, if you've failed it already, if you want to make sure you pass it on your first attempt, if you have dyslexia or learning difficulties, if you have no motivation to study, then this course will help you. I've put together worksheets, video tutorials, fact lists, all the official questions, case studies, uh, anxiety techniques. It's all in the, the prices and the pinned link. So look at the link at the bottom of the screen. And if you go all the way through it, you will be 100% prepared to pass your theory test. Way more than 5,000 passes so far. And you don't pay 69.95. You only pay 34.99 if you sign up while I'm live. Um, if you know that I have taught you anything this morning already, if you know that I've helped you with road signs, I've covered the shapes of road signs briefly. If you know, if you know I've helped you with the traffic light sequence, red, red and amber, green, amber, red. If that little rhyme has helped you, if I've helped you with the crossings and puff, knowing what a puff in crossing is the intelligent one. So therefore a pelican crossing is the one with a flashing amber phase. If you've learned that, then you know this course will help you. Let me show you what's in the theory test course and how you'll go through it to guarantee you're 100% test ready. Go to the introduction first, so you've got a really good understanding of what's expected in the theory test and how to go through the course. There are 14 different theory test topics. Let me show you what's in the accidents topic. You can download and print off a worksheet to fill in if you want to. You can fill it in while you're watching the video tutorials. Then you can listen to a fact list before you go and have a go at all of the official DVSA practice questions for that topic. When you've got all of the questions correct, have a go at the mock test for that topic. And when you get 10 out of 10 in the mock test, move on to the next topic and go through all of the topics in the same way so that by the time you get to the case studies and the full mock tests you'll find answering the questions easy and if you on here if you suffer from anxiety does anybody suffer from anxiety or know someone who suffers from anxiety just put a me in the comments if you do, if you either know somebody or you suffer from anxiety. So I know that so many people do. I've got more and more help for you guys coming up. But I do have help in my course because I became, because I realised how many people struggle, I became an NLP Master Practitioner and a Master Practitioner of Hypnosis. And I've put techniques into the course that will help you Get rid of anxiety and go to your test feeling however you want to feel. Feeling calm, feeling confident, feeling relaxed, feeling excited or happy. However you want to feel. Because you're in control of your feelings. And I help you with that. The awesome thing is if you go through these techniques in the few days leading up to your test, you will not fail through anxiety. I've also put techniques in the course to help you score well in your hazard perception test. And I've also put techniques in to help you answer any multiple choice question. And there's free bonuses as well. There's a hazard perception course and a hypnosis course. There's a top 10 reasons for failing and the top 20 hardest theory test questions are in the course as well. So you're getting those as bonuses. That's £35 worth of bonuses if you sign up while I'm live. 
just bought the course, it's awesome so you'll have an email, you can start using it straight away. Go to a little blue, you, you, you will be able to get through that if you went through the course. Um, so Sophie, yeah, go through the course step by step, starting at the very beginning. You won't have to pay ever again, you'll only pay for it once. It's yours for you to use for as long as you need it. Claudia, that's awesome. Uh, like I say, go through it step by step. You will pass, I know you will. The link is always at the bottom of my screen. I'll show you. Um, in case you don't click on it when I, that gold link there is always there. And if I pin it for you, it'll pop up on your screen now. It's pinned for you there. So it may take most people two to six weeks to go through it, but some people will go through it in a few days. Um, you'll really quickly see and hear how you're going to pass your theory test when you start to go through it. Uh, so we've got this question, Claire Don. I, our examiners on the practical course only have to pass a certain number each month. What do you think, guys? Do you think that examiners are only allowed to pass a certain amount of people? Or do you think that that's an excuse made by people who have failed their test? Do you think if you go to your English exam, they're only allowed to pass there's a certain number of people, so if everybody got most of it right, they would still fail you because they can't, they can't um, pass a certain amount of people. Exactly, it's an excuse by people who have failed. Okay, of course they're not. They, they can pretty much every single one of my pupils passed their theory test with either one or two faults. I think one point eight or something was my average. My average overall and pretty much everybody passed first time. So I wasn't very lucky. I, I went in a certain time of the month. Um, but I drove perfectly. My husband clipped the curb and passed. Um, that's that's. You think you drove perfectly, um, but you. But that that I've had people um, that have said they drove perfectly, and I was sat in the back, and I said, "But you you come out of that junction, and you didn't even look to the right. You didn't even look. So you didn't. Nobody was there." but you didn't look properly, or you don't even know that you skipped from the right lane to the left lane, to the right lane and back to the left lane. You don't even know you did that. Okay, so that, that'll be, it'll be one of those situations, I'm afraid, um, it happens. Um, clipping the curb is not necessarily a fail. Um, people have said to me, I want to pass, I need to pass because um, I've got children or whatever. Listen to this one. I just, Annie, I just wanted to let you know, I bought Test Buddy, that's my course, after finding you on TikTok, I gave myself a month to practice and have my theory tested today. This was my third time taking it with um, two small children. It was pretty difficult to revise and keep up with your videos and mock tests on Test Buddy. But although I didn't complete it, I still managed to pass today. One very happy mummy. Isn't that awesome? Um, Liam says, hello, can I say a massive thank you to Annie Winterbird for the support she gives people on TikTok and by, via the Test Buddy course. I have major dyslexia and anxiety and failed my theory test twice now. I purchased the course and watched her live videos every time. <clears throat> and, what, um, and this morning went to my third attempt and I passed. Thank you once again, says Liam. Isn't that awesome? So ask Annie. So a question came up and I was just talking about it a minute ago about failing your driving test. And I don't want to put you down, um, but there will be something that you did that the examiner deems to be a failure and you probably won't even know it. That's what happens, I'm afraid. Um, it's, it's, it's hard. I've had somebody that said to me, the driving, the examiner, oh my God, she just... She said to me, on that last screen, she said to me um, that I raced up to those traffic lights dangerously. And I said, you did. You did. The traffic lights were about to change. They'd been on green for ages and you accelerated. Did I? I don't even know that. Do you know what I mean? So you do things you don't even know that you did. Unfortunately, it's what happens. Don't worry about it. You get there next time. So some people will say to me, how, uh, it's no problem at all, Claire Don. I'm really, I'm really, really sorry. And it's extremely, extremely frustrating. Um, 
it just it just happens um so uh, what's what does somebody ask me oh yeah why wouldn't i buy a, 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 an app rather than your course because it's more expensive isn't it it's 34.99 for the course an app and lots of people pass through apps if an app's good enough for you then that's fine but are you actually learning through the app you answer me this are you learning or are you memorizing answers to questions and that's what i don't want you to do i don't want you to memorize answers to questions i want you to properly properly learn so an app will have all the questions all the answers it will have mock tests and has a perception but what and case studies what my course has got is got worksheets to fill in and video tutorials to teach you just like the video the, the just like the lesson i've just delivered on traffic lights okay it will have those to teach you and it will have a list of the facts that you can listen to because listening helps you to learn without even trying doesn't it uh, stay with me i've got my lines in the road lesson coming any second um any minute now um what else has my course has got? My course has got games to help make learning easy. It's got um, it's got um, anxiety techniques, so you can go to your test feeling calm and confident. It's got hazard perception techniques, so that you can, you know how to do your hazard perception clips. You know what you're looking for, when to click, and how to click, and how to score well. It's got all of those things. It's got 16 specially created mock tests, so you don't have to do hundreds of mock tests to know your test ready. You just do 16. Don't forget to subscribe to me. Don't forget to follow me on TikTok, guys, and keep the likes coming in because I've got 138,000 likes in one hour. I've been live for just under an hour um, and I've got 138 and a half thousand already. I reckon I can beat my all time um, best, which would be awesome. My name is Annie. If you just joined me, um, is it your first time watching me? Let me know. Or have you seen me before? Let me know. I ask this all the time, but I absolutely love seeing who's here, been here before and who's new to, to, to watching me. First driving lesson. Charlotte, how was it? First time, new, been before, yes. Oh, he knows who I am, Charlotte. Is that okay? That's uh, that's 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 really that's really great. Um, I do have a few driving instructors follow me. How regularly how regularly do I come on, Dolly? I come on um, live Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at nine till twelve. Keep your comments coming in nine till twelve, um, and I come on at half past six in the evenings when I can. Um, when because I'm a driving instructor, so if I can get home from work on time. I nearly didn't get to this lesson on time. I was stuck in traffic. I shums, that's awesome. I had to take my dog to the groomers and the traffic was awful. And I got back in the house at nine o'clock and ran, ran to my office to get on for about two minutes past nine for you today. So I'll come on every weekday. I'll come on on a Sunday evening as well if I can, although it won't. Oh, it might be this Sunday. I'm away this weekend, but I'm back, I'm back for Sunday evening. So I may well come live Sunday evening. Can we please do questions? So like you, we were doing what I'm planning today. I have planned about 250 slides and they are in my on my computer screen ready to plan to ready to deliver. I do questions only in the evenings. Charlotte Hawks, awesome. Tina Perez, awesome. I'm at, my name is Annie. I'm an ADI. That means I'm an approved driving instructor. I'm also an audit trainer. That means I'm on the official register for driving instructor trainers. Shamsi, is that awesome? Um, I'm also a theory test expert. So um, I, I'm a driving instructor. I will do these lessons every morning because I know I'm managing to get lots of people following me and I'm helping lots and lots and lots of people. Yes, Yasmin, I know. Um, so I want to keep on doing that. So long as you put your positive comments in um, and um, join in, make these lives interactive, then I will keep on coming on five times a week I could not do this and go and deliver driving lessons, but I don't. I want to do this because I know I'm helping so much, so many people. 
I created a course and for the course I've been awarded the most innovative driving school which I'm really proud of. For my driving school it's called Spot on Driving based in Knutsford in Cheshire. I've been awarded Superior Achievement and Excellence which I'm really proud of. I'm really proud that I got the um, this DVSA, which is the Driver and Vehicle Standards Agency, they've looked at my course. They create the theory test and they've looked at my course and they're really happy with what I am, um, what I have delivered. So they have given me all the latest theory test questions and any time that there's an update, they will update me and let me know, which I think is absolutely awesome. I'm just trying to see... Um, if I can find that uh, review from earlier, and I can't because somebody's been on my emails and deleted, that's fine. Let's go through lines made easy. A lot of people say I don't know where to start with a theory test. Um, there are the theory test, the info, the questions you get asked are based on information that you will find in three books, and those three books are the Highway Code. Know your traffic signs. Driving the essential skills. OK, so you could read those three books. Um, what else can you do? Not everybody reads the books. Obviously, of course, they don't. A lot of people just go through my course. Um, Ruby, awesome. Um, fine. Thank you, Fatima. Um, so you go through this course because everything in this course that you need, everything in those books, that you need or everything in that course is what you need and when you've done the learning yes queen precious when you've done the learning then it's time to um practice questions what a lot of people do is they just practice questions and just try to memorize questions that's not the way to learn it might work i'm not saying it won't work for you it might work for you but that's why people are failing again and again and again OK, no, you go Google it, please go and Google the, the, the book on um, theory books. They're, they're there on Amazon for you. So lines on the road, whoever struggles with lines painted on the road, questions about lines painted on the road, whoever struggles with them, let me know. If you need books, then please just go on to Amazon, Google the theory books and they'll be there for you. I'm doing a live lesson. It's very hard for me to go off the live and link things for you. Lots of people struggle with lines pasted on the road. Why do we need to even learn about them? So it's be really aware. Why do we even need to learn about lines painted on the road? Vicky, you need to be using something that's updated because breaking and stopping distances have been out of the theory test for ages for ages and ages and ages. They've never been in my course, okay? They've been out of the theory test for ages. So make sure you're using something that is, is updated. So why do we need to, great, great answers, keep, keep them coming, some great answers coming in. They mean different things, they can keep us safe, make us aware of hazards, know where you're going. Beth Buchanan, thank you. Yeah, it's a really good idea. It'd be cheaper, I think, maybe not. Helps you safe, safe, give us instructions, absolutely. Gives warnings, absolutely. There's so many reasons why we need to learn about lines painted on the road. I've put uh, a convey information, shrinking violet, awesome. They make driving easy. They do, actually. What people do go, oh my God, don't know where to go. And they haven't looked. That's, uh, that's, um, that's quite common. Um, why do we need to learn them? To answer theory test questions to be aware of dangers ahead, to be in the correct position in the road, so you can get to your destination easier, so you don't break the law. And other reasons, confidence, make you confident about where you're going. What do these yellow lines mean? So we start with a question, we'll go through the lesson, and we'll come back to the question. Course, Ruby, the course. If you've got the books, and you've covered my course and you're covering roundabouts, for example, and you like reading, read the book section about roundabouts. Otherwise, you don't need to read the books. Lots of people can't read, you see. So it's always extra work will be fine, but the course will help. OK, lots of different answers. No waiting, no parking. Is there any I don't knows coming in? If you, if you don't know, please put I don't know. Um... 
I love reading the non and by the books. Awesome. You don't know. You don't know. So keep the comments coming in. Because if everybody knows the right answer, then I'm doing the wrong lesson, aren't I? So if you don't know, it's important if you don't know that you tell me you don't know. Otherwise, I'm thinking, oh, I'm covering the wrong thing here. Now, I've covered this so many times that everybody knows it. OK, so please put I don't know if you don't know. Awesome. And it gives other people confidence to say, well, I don't know either. Brilliant. OK, so great. If you do know, that's fantastic. Let me make it even clearer for you. If you don't know, that's fantastic because I'm going to help you right now. So the first thing I want you to remember in my lines made easy lesson is that more paint equals more danger or restrictions. They wouldn't put paint on the roads, more extra paint on the roads unless there was more danger on that part of the road or more restrictions on that part of the road. Now, give me a yes if that makes sense. So if you're driving along and suddenly there's loads more road markings, that's because there's loads more danger or loads more restrictions. And restrictions means things you are allowed to, things you're not allowed to do, okay? Don't do that. More restrictions, more stuff that you can't do. That makes sense. Brilliant. As you're driving along, look at this picture here. You've got a yellow car going up the road, a white car coming down the road. And in between those cars are short lines with long gaps. Can you see that? Just, can you see that? Just put L for line if you can see what I'm talking about. Because you really, I want you to focus here for just a few minutes and you'll really, really get that. So put the word L for line if you can see the short lines. And have you noticed that the lines are dead short and the gaps are dead long? So put an L in the comments if you notice that. Brilliant. And that is, they are just there to separate the traffic. So the yellow car and the white car can stay on their own sides of the road. Fab. Now, sometimes those lines get longer. Sometimes those lines get longer. So now we've got long lines and short gaps. I'll show you the difference. Short lines, long gaps, long lines, short gaps. Okay, now there's more paint on the road now, isn't there? So long lines are called hazard lines. You must be driving towards something that's more hazardous. What could you be driving towards? Where will you find hazard lines, do you think? You could be coming up to a roundabout Lee Rowlingson, yeah, a, a roundabout Catherine, a junction CMAS, a hazard CS, what, Sean, sorry, Sean, what kind of hazard, a bend by a school, by a, cr a crossing, a tunnel, yeah, absolutely, near a junction, a busy junction, brilliant, and near a crossroads, a socks, absolutely, coming up to a hill or a dip in the road, brilliant. So you're going to find hazard lines, city centre, you're going to find a hazard line, hazard lines, where there's more danger or restrictions. Put the letter H if you understand that and you can move on to my next, next slide. If you understand that you'll find hazard lines approaching junctions, roundabouts, a bridge, sharp bends that dip in the road and other places as well. Just put H in the comments if you, if you get that. And keep putting that. I've got 150,000 likes in one hour and 10 minutes. Awesome. Fantastic. Okay, now some so we've done short lines, we've done long lines. Now we're going to do two sets of lines. Quite often, you will find there's two sets of lines. And the line that is important to you is the line that's next to you. So look at the green car. The green car has got a solid white line next to it. What does it mean if that solid line is next to you? Put a few answers in now because I'm going to rest my voice for just a second. Great answers. Brilliant. Yeah, awesome. Brilliant. If you don't know, don't worry. That solid line is next to you. It means no overtaking. You shouldn't cross over that line. 
because you, you're at a really dangerous part of the road and if you overtake at this part of the road that would be dangerous okay so they don't want you to cross over that solid white line can the purple car overtake the purple car that's coming towards you is that purple car allowed to overtake the vehicle in front of it yes it can the purple car can see clearly ahead. The green car driver can't see clearly ahead. That makes sense. Put OT for overtake, if that makes sense. Are you with me? So can the purple car overtake? Yes, the purple car has got dashed lines next to it. That means the purple car can see clearly ahead and they can make a judgment when it's safe to um, overtake the green car cannot overtake fab loads of people understand that now there are some exceptions the green car can go over those lines go over the solid line if there's a broken down vehicle the green car can overtake so, um, um, a bicycle or a road a road maintenance vehicle if it's going very slowly if the bicycle or the road maintenance vehicle is going really really slowly what speed is that guys do anybody know what speed is it is so the green car can overtake a bicycle or road maintenance vehicle going at a certain speed maria's got it jack and jill's got it lots of people kb yeah Kath Brindley. It's very slow, guys. It is very slow. If the bicycle is going very slow, it's 10 miles per hour or less. So keep that in your head. Say that out loud. 10 miles per hour or less. Then you're allowed to overtake if it's safe, if you can find a safe gap. Cool. I know the new theory test questions. Do you know them? Okay, so um, ask me in the Ask Annie section and I'll go through them with you. So sometimes, I can see all of these rows, sorry, all of these rows have got two sets of lines on them. There's, la there's road A, road, road, road one, road two and road three. And they've, all three of those have got two sets of lines in the centre of the road. When there's two sets of lines, there's another rule that you need to be aware of to answer theory test questions correctly. Anybody know what that rule is? Does anybody know what the rule is? So when there are two sets of lines in the centre of the road, that means no stopping on that road except to pick up or set down passengers so two sets of lines no stopping except to pick up or set down passengers you some of you've got it there well done the answers sometimes take a while to come through to me Hundred fifty-eight thousand likes awesome so let's go through a question now this no stopping rule it doesn't matter if the lines are dashed and solid both solid solid and hazard lines it doesn't matter all that matters is there are two sets of lines for this rule okay so you see these double white lines along the center of the road when may you park on the left it's a typical theory test question if the line nearest to you is broken when there are no yellow lines to pick up or set down passengers during daylight hours only so what is the right answer? Great answers coming in. Thank you for the likes. Don't forget to follow me in between um, watching this. Go on to my, um, my account to make sure you're following me. Annie, you, Annie, Wonderland, Annie in Wonderland, you know the answer. You know it. The answer is exactly as you said, to pick up or set down passengers awesome i would need you to know that it doesn't matter if it's two sets of two solid lines or one of them is broken it doesn't make any difference what does this line mean does anybody know 
Put your answers in the comments if you know what this line means. Amy, that's why I'm here and that's why I've created this course. I'm really sorry to hear it. It's very frustrating, isn't it? Keep your likes coming. Yeah, so it actually means edge of carriageway. Now, for some people that said it means overtaking, don't worry about that. That's the that's why I've put it into this lesson because that's what people are getting mixed up with. Look at the line. It's right over towards one side of the um, road. It's right next to the curb, right next to the edge of the road, isn't it? Do you agree? Does that now make sense? Can you see how you got it wrong? It's not in the middle of the road. If it was in the middle of the road, it would mean no overtaking, but it's not. It's right over to the edge of the road and it simply means edge of carriageway. Does that make sense? Yes, edge of road means the same as edge of carriageway. Makes sense. Awesome, keep them coming in. Keep your answers coming in. Fab. Okay, so what do these yellow lines mean? So we started off this lesson by asking about the about yellow lines. So let's go but let's get into now yellow and red lines. Whoever gets mixed up between yellow and red lines, anybody or not, but yes or no. Do you ever get mixed up between yellow and red lines? Just put yes or no. Yes. Yes. Yeah, no, good. Cool, so let's talk about waiting. Thank you, Andy. Let's talk about waiting or stopping, waiting versus stopping, and what the difference is between waiting and stopping. Now, waiting means that you can stop you just can't wait there. I'm just looking for my steering wheel. I like to have my props, I like my props. Okay, so waiting, you're driving along and your friend says to you, you've got your friend in the car and your friend says to you, um, can you just stop, uh, let me out, I want to go to the shop. Waiting means you can stop the car and let your friend get out of the car, but you can't wait. Does that make sense? Yellow, uh, waiting means you can't wait there. You can stop, but you can't wait. Stopping means if your friend says, can I get out of the car because uh, I want to go to the shop, you can't even stop on that road. That's the difference between waiting and stopping. Does that make sense? You can stop to drop people off or to pick people up, but you can't wait. And stopping means you can't even stop. Does that make sense? Double tap the screen. Uh, let's get up to 200,000 likes before 11 o'clock would be awesome. That makes sense, brilliant. Let's talk about yellow lines because yellow lines are all about waiting. Yellow's all about waiting. If there is one yellow line, that means there are waiting restrictions, which means on this road, sometimes you can wait, sometimes you can't wait. How will you know when you're allowed to wait and when you're not allowed to wait? How will you know? There's signs, brilliant, there'll be a sign. So a sign like this one that says no waiting, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. So give me a time that you can wait on this road. Any time. Give me any time of day or night that you can wait. 7 p.m. you can wait. 9 p.m. you can wait. 7 a.m. 6.30 you can wait. Fantastic. 
between eight o'clock in the morning and six o'clock at night, no waiting on this road. You can stop to drop somebody off. You can stop to pick somebody up, but you can't wait. What's another word for waiting? Can you think of another word for waiting? Thank you, Andrew. That's an awesome comment. You've been driving um, past for three weeks, but still love watch. Still like, but still watch these videos. Awesome. Pause. Another word for waiting is pausing. Stopping. Um, it's not that no, stopping is not another word for waiting. Stopping is different. Um, what's another word? Parking. Brilliant. Parking. No waiting. No parking. No staying there. Okay, Does that makes sense. One yellow line, waiting restrictions. There'll be a sign to tell you when you can and can't. Two yellow lines, no waiting at all on this road. Does that make sense? One line, restrictions. Two lines, not at all. N-O, let me know how you get on. Sometimes... It makes sense. Fantastic. Sometimes you'll see, and you'll certainly see them in your theory test, you'll see these yellow lines painted on the curb. They're not on the road, they're on the curb. And they're all to do with loading. Loading is about delivery people, you know, people delivering stuff to shops. Yeah. And it's got that. So when they're delivering, that's called loading. Yeah, one yellow line, loading restrictions, and there'll be a sign telling the delivery person when they're allowed to load and when they're not allowed to load. Two yellow lines, no loading at all on this road. Okay, um, so Erin Frankie, does, so does waiting mean parking? Or do you need to stay in the car? Waiting means... You can stop, let someone get out of your car, and then you've got to drive again, drive away again. Or you can stop, let someone get into your car, and then drive away again, okay? That's all about waste. So you can stop, you just can't stay there. So you certainly can't get out of your car, <laughs> okay? Cool. So let's talk about red lines. Red lines are all about stopping. Red traffic light is about stopping red um red lines are about stopping one red line means there are stopping restrictions we're going to go through this whole process again how will you know when you're allowed to stop on this road and when you aren't allowed to stop on this road Good luck for your test today. Where were the traffic lights from? I can't remember. I got them ages ago, years ago. There'll be a sign. Brilliant. And here's a, a typical sign. Okay. No stopping. Monday to Saturday, 7 a.m. until 7 p.m. What day are you allowed to stop all day on this road? There's one day that you're allowed to stop at any time on this road. You might never see red lines. It depends on where you live. Sunday. Sunday's not mentioned. So you can't stop between 7 o'clock in the morning and 7 o'clock at night on Monday to Saturday. But you can stop in the evenings or very early morning. And you can stop on a Sunday. Sunday, fun day, says Subi. Awesome. Now, two red lines means no stopping at all on this road. It's a red route. You will, must not stop at all on this road. And two red lines painted on the road means exactly the same as two red lines in a cross in a sign like this. No stopping. Where will we find red roots? Because some people will never, ever have seen them. Some people will see them every day. Where will you find red roots? London, says Laura Berry. Yeah. You find them in city centres, but you get loads of them in London, okay? Awesome. So, as a reminder, yellow lines are about waiting around airports. Yeah. Yellow lines are about waiting 
and red lines are about stopping. You cannot even stop to pick your friend up. You cannot even stop to let your friend get out of the car on red lines. Let's come back to the question. What do these yellow lines mean? Do they mean no waiting, no stopping, stopping restrictions or no loading? Some great comments coming in. So our yellow lines are about waiting or stopping and our two lines about restrictions or not at all. Let's see how many correct answers coming in. Loads of correct answers coming in. So remember, yellow lines are about waiting. So these lines mean no waiting on this road. Two lines Two, two, two lines means across, no. Yeah, I like that. Two lines means no. Okay, two lines, not at all. Yellow is about waiting. Um, red is about stopping and these are yellow. So no waiting. More paint equals more danger or restrictions. So two lines means not at all. These lines are not about loading. Loading lines are painted on the curb. Those lines are painted on the road. Okay, loading lines are painted on the curb. Does that make sense? Let me show you the curb picture, if I can find it very quickly. There you go. That's the loading line, they're painted on the curb. And they're to do with loading delivery drivers. Cool. More paint, more danger or restrictions. Let's come back to box junctures now. We've got even more paint on the roads, haven't we? So when may you enter a box junction? Keep the lights coming. I've got 188 and a half thousand likes. Thank you guys. Keep them coming. Good luck, Grace. So when may you enter a box junction? When there are fewer than two vehicles ahead, when your exit road is clear, when traffic signs direct you, so put your answers in. If you don't know, please put IDK because if everybody knows, then I will skip on to the next lesson. I don't know, Grave Wax. If everybody knows the answer and everybody's positive about it, then I'll move on to the next lesson. So I need to know. If you don't know, I really do need to know, then I won't skip. I've done that before. Everybody thought, yeah, I know this. I thought, okay, you don't need to learn this. I don't want to waste your time. So lots of people know, but there's quite a few IDKs coming, coming through now. So let's talk about box junctions then. Box junctions have loads of yellow paint marked on the road, crisscross markings painted within a box on the road surface. And they're designed to keep parts of the road clear of traffic. They don't want those boxes to get blocked with traffic. So there are certain times you are allowed to wait in the box junction and other times you're not. The rules of box junctions are very simple. You should only go into a box junction if you know you're not going to get stuck in the box junction when the traffic lights change. Does that make sense? I'll tell you how to do that in a minute, how to judge that. But does that make sense that you should only go into a box junction if you're sure you're not going to get stuck there? Put yeses in. Don't forget to follow me. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube as well. It makes sense. Awesome. So this is a picture of a box junction and you can see the blue car sat here and there's a space there where the green car was a minute ago. The green car was there, it's gone to wait in the box junction. The blue car is staying behind the line. Let's talk about the blue car first of all. The traffic lights are on green but the blue car is weighted behind the line. The blue car wants to go straight ahead. 
where the red arrow is. Why has the blue car stayed there? Why is it not gone ahead? Could anybody put the answer in? Spamming me with likes, awesome, thank you. Great answers coming in, well done, keep them coming in. If the blue car, think about this, if you're not sure about it, if the blue car went forward, where would it have to stop? Yeah, the, the, the exit isn't clear. The orange car and the blue car ahead is there, so, that, so this blue car would have to wait where the arrow is. And if that traffic doesn't move, it would get stuck in that, in the box junction. So you don't want to go. It's going to wait behind the line. If the blue car was turning left, would it be able to go straight away? If the blue car was turning left, would it be able to go? Have I? Whoa, 200,000 likes. Wow, thank you guys. I didn't even notice that. Yes, if the blue car was turning left, it could go because the exit road is clear. The exit road means the road you're going into. Let's move on to the green car. The green car wants to turn right. It wants to go where the blue arrow is pointing. And it's allowed to wait in the box junction. The green car is allowed to wait there. Why is it allowed to wait in the box junction? Thank you, Andy. Yet, yeah, Drew Visha. Okay, so when the white cars have driven past, will the green car be able to turn into the new road? Yes or no? When the white cars, the oncoming traffic, have gone past, Will the green car be able to turn into the new road? Yes, it will. When the traffic lights change and all the traffic stops coming, would that green car be able to turn into the new road? It would. There's nothing stopping it from turning except the oncoming traffic. When the traffic lights change, it won't be stuck there because the oncoming traffic would stop and the green car could turn. So where the green car is going, the exit road is clear. All that it's waiting for is the oncoming traffic to pass by. Does that make sense? When the traffic lights change, that green car will not be stuck in the box junction because there's nothing stopping it from turning into the new road. It makes sense, awesome. So you can wait in a box junction, one, if your exit road is clear, the road you're going into is clear. And two, if all that you're waiting for is oncoming traffic to pass by. So once those white cars have passed by, that green car can easily turn. It's not going to be stuck in the box junction, is it? It's not going to get stuck there, so it's still allowed, it will be allowed to turn. Let's come back to the question. And keep those lights, I've got 206,000. When may you... When may you enter a box junction? When there are fewer than two vehicles ahead, when your exit road is clear, when traffic signs direct you. Put your answer in. If I've helped you, double tap the screen as well. That'd be awesome. This is more likes than I've ever had in one hour, 30 minutes, one and a half hours. I've had 200,000, 208.6 thousand likes, awesome. 
So now you know the answer, A, B or C. You know you're allowed to wait in a box junction when your exit road is clear, when the road you're going into is clear. It's not blocked with traffic. When may you stop and wait in a box junction? Here's another question for you. Have a look at this pinned link. If I'm helping you or if you're still struggling and you want to hear it again and again, then please uh, click on that link. Your thumb hurts. <laughs> oh, thank you. I do appreciate it. When may you wait? When may you stop and wait in a box junction? You've got it, haven't you? See Dan Alec. Congratulations. You can wait a stop and wait in a box junction when oncoming traffic prevents you from turning right. So the oncoming traffic is stopping you, the oncoming traffic stops and then you can go. So it's fine because you're not going to be stuck there. As so long as you're not going to be stuck there. So that's my more paint. Remember, more paint equals more danger or restrictions. And that's my lines made easy lesson. And I've covered lines made easy and I've covered box junctions and I've covered yellow and red lines painted on the road because there are 1.8 million tests taken, 879,000 passes and only a 47% pass rate. If you want to know more and you want to make sure that you're not one of these people, please click on the link below. 53% of people are failing, which is way too high. And people are failing. Put a me in the comments if this is you. I fail because I just don't get it. Honestly, I just don't get it. I'm looking at questions and answers and I just don't get it. I fail because um, I, um, I fail because I have dyslexia. I fail because I um, have learning difficulties. I fail because I have no motivation to study. I fail because English isn't my first language. Keep, keep putting me's in if this is you. RS Turbo, are you, are you in my course? Have you been through it all? Or do you think that a um, a a one-to-one -one would help? Go to this screenshot now. Go to testbuddy.app forward slash contact and leave a message for a one-to-one. -one. Because you don't want to go wasting your time taking tests again and again and again if you just don't get it. Somebody can help you to get it. That's what I'm doing right here now. I'm helping you to get it. My course will definitely help you to get it. It'll take you through it step by step. Because if failing can be embarrassing, certainly frustrating. Oh no, Claire. You've done it twice before, you can do it again. Failing is a waste of your time, isn't it? And it's definitely a waste of money. How much have you wasted taking and failing theory tests? One theory test, £23. Two would be £46. Five would be a hundred and... I'm really good at maths. So ten would be £230. So five would be £115. £300, I know. Getting on the road costs a lot of money overall. You don't want to waste money by taking and failing and retaking and failing tests. You have to um, take a test, a theory test. You have to take a driving test. You'll have driving lessons probably. You'll buy a car, you'll insure a car. You'll put fuel in your car. All of those things cost thousands altogether. Don't waste extra money by taking and failing tests. I can teach you to pass. I've created a theory test course to put it all together for you. I've put together worksheets and video tutorials and fact lists that all of the official DVSA questions are in there and case studies and stuff like anxiety techniques and hazard perception techniques and question techniques. Whoever second guesses themselves and that they think they've got the right answer, then they change it into the wrong answer. Whoever does that, don't trust yourself. So you second guess yourself. Let me know. Just put a yes if you ever do, or a me if you ever do that. My next lesson is going to help with that. My next lesson is going to help you with that. Ellie, you've 
I think it's a con for your money. I never had a question I've seen before in here. Well, you, then you're on the wrong things because these are the official DVSA theory test practice questions. These ones, these ones, okay? That's them. And they're all in my course. And every question that I cover is stuff that you need to know because the DVSA have given me them. So if you've not seen them, then maybe what you're using isn't correct, okay? So I know what I'm using is the most, in, not in your actual theory. No, because the difference in your actual theory. The actual theory test is a test of your knowledge not a test of your ability to memorise questions. So if I cover, if the official DVSA practice question asks you about crossroads, then that means I'm going to get questions about crossroads in my theory test. It won't be that exact question, but it will be a question like that. If you're asked about overtaking, that means they want you to know about overtaking. Won't be the exact same question but they're telling you, I want, this is what you need to practice. And I know my course is going to help you. I know you'll be 100% prepared to pass when you go all the way through it. And I know it's helped way, way, way more than 5,000 people um, to pass so far. I've kept the price really low. It's the price of one single one hour driving lesson. Uh, that's all the course is. $34.99 for the price of one single one hour driving lesson. If you click on that link, you can see theory test course at the top and that's what you would click on to sign up. Or you can go to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That'd be awesome as well. That's awesome for you. So you get more and more and more help and support. Let me show you what's in the theory test course and how you'll go through it to guarantee you're 100% test ready. Go to the introduction first. So you've got a really good understanding of what's expected in the theory test and how to go through the course. There are 14 different theory test topics. Let me show you what's in the accidents topic. You can download and print off a worksheet to fill in if you want to. You can fill it in while you're watching the video tutorials. Then you can listen to a fact list before you go and have a go at all of the official DVSA practice questions for that topic. When you've got all of the questions correct, have a go at the mock test for that topic. And when you get 10 out of 10 in the mock test, move on to the next topic and go through all of the topics in the same way so that by the time you get to the case studies and the full mock tests, you'll find answering the questions easy. Thanks, Pancholia. If you su suffer from anxiety, then I can help with that. Uh, if you click on the link, then there is an, a test anxiety course that you can sign up for. And the person that created that course is not me, it's Diane Hall, because I specialise in theory. So although I do therapy, I'm special, I am specialise in theory. But Diane Hall is a driving instructor who specialises in, 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 um, in, in, in anxiety, test anxiety. So there's a course there linked for you. But I'm an NLP Master Practitioner and I've put techniques into my course that will help you get rid of anxiety and go to your test feeling calm and confident or feeling relaxed, good, spicy, kissy, awesome. There are also techniques in my course to help you score well on your hazard perception test and there are also techniques in my course to help you to answer any multiple choice question. Emma Lane, it takes time to organise. Um, there's more to organise than we thought because we've never done this before. So I'll keep you updated. Uh, but not just at the moment. I'm sorry. I know it should be this week. There are free bonuses as well. So if you sign up while I'm live, then you will get a um, theory test course, of course, but you'll also get hazard perception course worth 9 99 and you'll get hypnosis course worth $14.99. That is three audio tracks for you to listen to. Um, three tracks, one for theory test, one for driving test and one for driving. So you got those for the rest of your life. So you got those for your driving test and when you're a driver as well. You're also going to get two free ebooks, top 10 reasons for failure, top 20 hardest theory test questions. You will get all of those 
if you sign up while I'm live. So please don't sign up on other time and ask me why you didn't get all those extra bonuses because they are if you sign up while I'm live and I'm live for, the, for another hour or so. The free bonuses are worth just under £35. You'll only pay once for the course. You'll use it for as long as you need it, but you'll only pay for it once. Um, so most people take between two and six weeks to go all the way through the course. But some people will buy it a day or two a week before the test and go through some of it and pass. Does that make sense? So it's best if you give yourself two to six weeks. But I know people have been all the way through it in a week and still passed. And as soon as you sign up, you'll get an email. Um, you, it'll take you to that email. We'll give you a link to the Test Buddy website. Keep the likes coming, guys. I'm coming back in with my two-step technique any minute now. And you will really, really quickly see and hear how you're going to pass if you go through it from the beginning. Here's a couple of people have been through it. Carla May Smith said, I passed my theory sixth time after buying your course. Thank you so much. Fox Paper Scissors. Hi, Annie. I passed my theory test yesterday after a failed 13 attempts and through your course, I passed. Daniel Perkins says, thanks to your course, I passed after 18 attempts. And Tank Girl Kess says, I'm loving the course. It's so helpful. Isn't that awesome? Let's see if you've got any questions for me. Let me know if you've got anything you want to know and then we'll get on with the next lesson. I do have, if you go on to, I've asked questions, I've seen questions about how can I help with driving? I don't have a link to it on it to, to share on here, but if you go here and you ask for the link for my driving course, then that driving course is called driving test course. So I have theory test course and driving test course. So just go there, screenshot now and ask for that. The course, this course is only £34.99. Um, are stopping distance in the test anymore? I'm really surprised I get asked that several times every live when they haven't been in the test for ages. So please make sure you're using the most up-to-date, um, most updated um, app or book or um, course um, because they're not in the test. You don't need to learn them anymore. What you do need to learn instead of stopping distances, you need to know what will affect your stopping distances. So can I get um, a comment in here now? I'm using them, oh, Mr. I'm using the course. Thank you, official is the course now and I'm amazed how much I've remembered Elizabeth awesome and that's because you're learning isn't it you're not just trying to memorize thanks, thanks for that comment so what will affect stopping distances rain good so if it's wet road it's going to take you twice as long to stop if it's icy it's going to take you at least 10 times the distance good any anything else that would affect stopping distances other than the weather anything else tiredness brilliant the driver becky yeah brilliant your tires if you've taken drugs or medication or had a drink how well your brakes are working i shams you will have the email if you put the correct email in it's automated um so just go to them if you've bought it the email pops back immediately yes using your mobile phone will affect you Having a football under the brake pedal. Oh, yeah, I know. Just make sure there's nothing on your floor that can um, roll like a water bottle, roll under your pedals. That is dangerous. Um, yeah, oil spillage, uh, Deborah. Absolutely, all of those things will affect how quickly your you. Um, you stop the car, and that's what you need to know. You also need to know about a two second gap. So in good dry conditions, you should leave a two second gap between your car and the car in front. When it's wet, how long should that gap be? Anybody know? If you don't know, please put IDK so I can help even more. I can help give a, a way of remembering. 
if you don't know, it's important. If you said, if you do know, please put your comments in. But if you don't know, then please let me know you don't know so that I can help. Cool. Okay, so lots of people getting it right. Well done. It is a four second gap. So when you're um, driving in on dry roads, you leave a two second gap between you and the car in front. When it's wet, that's doubled to four seconds. Do this with your hands yourself. When it's icy, it's 10 times the gap. 10 times the gap is 20 seconds. So two doubled to four and then 10 times, which is 20. Don't just say 20, you must put 20 seconds because some people are getting it wrong because they're, put, they're putting um, 20 um the wrong thing within times within seconds and times okay does that make sense so make sure it's 10 times which is 20 seconds and then you won't get mixed up <laughs> user awesome don't forget to follow me on tiktok don't forget to subscribe to me you can do that by clicking on this link that i've just pinned there below my name is Annie, I'm an ADI, that means I'm an approved driving instructor, I'm an audit trainer, I'm a theory test expert, some great responses coming in, well done. And I'm here to, uh, oh, I've been, uh, I've created a theory test course, I've been awarded most innovative driving school, I've been awarded superior achievement and excellence for my driving school. The DVSA have looked at my um, courses and they've decided that they're happy to give me the most updated theory test questions. And you've got them guaranteed, the most updated ones are in my course. Here's somebody who took my course, recently sent this to me. Hello, just wanted to say thank you for creating your theory test course. My fiance is dyslexic and just passed today after using your course. Highly recommend to anyone who is struggling to pass their theory test. Now, I know you might think it's a bit of an investment, but £23 every time you take and fail a test is such a waste of your money. Do that twice, that's £46. The course is £34.99. It will help you to draw, it will help you to um, pass your theory test. The course will help you to be a better driver because you've got more knowledge about driving on the road. Keep double tapping the screen, guys. It'll help you to make better driving decisions, pass your driving test easier, be a safer driver, keep other people safer. So the course is there for life. I asked before, whoever struggles um, and second guesses themselves. So you don't trust yourself when you're answering theory test questions you might put the answer in then you change the answer because you think it's something different and you change it from the right answer to the wrong answer who's ever done that loads of people so what i'm going to share with you is my technique in my course, I have a five step question technique. I'm going to share two of those steps right now. So I'm going to share my two steps of my technique with you right now to help you answer any theory test question and to help you stop second guessing yourself. Are you ready? So go through, Who's who has seen this technique before? Put a yes or a no if you've seen this before. I haven't changed it yet because it takes hours to change the slides. So I've got no, 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 no. Awesome. Lots of people have not seen it. Great, and some people have. Okay, so let's show this two-step question technique. I'm going to show um, how to answer any theory test question. Um, let's use this question to demonstrate. The question is, where should you avoid overtaking? And the four possible answers are, just after a bend in a one-way street on a 30 miles per hour road approaching a dip in the road. And the first thing we're going to do is get rid of two rubbish answers. So what I want you to do now is go back to the questions 
and tell me what the rubbish answers are in your opinion. What are two rubbish answers? 233,000 likes is going to be my best ever number of likes. I think 230 is about the maximum I've ever had and I'm on for another, another hour. So where should you avoid overtaking? What are the rubbish answers? And I'll tell you what I've put in a minute. Ellie and it's BC and Parwan Gowinda. Gowinda, is that? I've put the same as you. I've put the rubbish, the rubbish answers are in a one-way street on a 30 miles per hour road. Don't worry if you put different answers to me. OK, don't worry about that. They're just the two that I think are complete and utter rubbish because you can definitely overtake in a one way street and you can definitely overtake on a 30 miles per hour road. So the first step of my technique is to get rid of two rubbish answers. Pretend they don't even exist. Don't look at them anymore. Does that make sense? Put some yeses in the comments if that makes sense that now I've got a 50-50 chance of getting the answer correct because I've got rid of two rubbishy answers. That makes sense. Awesome. So, so we're left with two possible options only. Now, the next step to this technique is to think about the words safest option. Now, the question was, where should you avoid overtaking? And the two possible answers were just after a bend and approaching a dip in the road. Well, it's OK to overtake after a bend, isn't it? It's OK to overtake after a bend. But when you're approaching a dip in the road, you don't know what's coming towards you. Do you know what a dip in the road is? Put yeses or noes in. Put some yeses or noes in if you know what a dip in the road is. OK, a drop in the road, Sarah Lou Webster. Awesome. So when the road is going along flat like this and then the road goes down and up again. And then so the opposite to a hill. OK, it's a dip in the road and you don't know what's on that bit. bit. If you're driving here, if you're here, if you I get another car, if you are here, you don't know what's in this dip because you can't see. You can just see above the dip. OK, so that's what a dip in the road is. And you shouldn't overtake when you're driving towards a dip in the road. It's basically a hill, yeah, but it goes down, yeah. You shouldn't go, to, you shouldn't overtake when you're approaching a dip in the road. Does that make sense? So approaching a dip in the road is the correct answer to that question. Does that make sense? That is my two-step question technique. I'm going to go through it again with you using another question. Yes, it does. Fantastic. So the next question is, you're planning to tow a caravan. What will help the handling of the combination? Can we get to 240,000 likes? Because I've never had that many ever, ever, ever. So can we get to 240? That'd be awesome if we can. So you're planning to tow a caravan. What will help the handling of the combination? We've got anti-lock brakes, power steering, breakaway cable or stabiliser. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to ask you, do you know what is meant by handling of the combination? Put a yes or a no in. You've no idea. Somebody says what the answer is. <gasps> 240, thank you. So let me talk about the handling of the combination. OK, so the combination just means the car and the caravan joined together. That's all they mean by that. And sometimes what can happen is they don't handle very well. They don't manage very well together. And the caravan can start to sway like this. That's not good, is it? That's called snaking. How could you stop that from happening? If your caravan starts to snake, what can you do to stop it from happening as the driver.
what it's already started to happen Naomi yes awesome so it's already started to happen you could 21 oh that's right decelerate slow down ease off the gas pedal ease off the accelerator brilliant answers well done okay so it's not accelerate it is definitely slow down ease off the gas keep your hands firmly on the steering wheel because if you don't bring it under control it can end up like that which would not be good okay but you can control it what can cause this to happen guys is all theory questions that you need to know i'm not just talking random stuff here so what can cause this to happen I'm helping you answer so many questions here. Side winds, strong winds, winds, absolutely. Wind can cause it to happen. Or a lorry going past can cause a big gust of wind and cause the caravan to start snaking. So the question was, you're planning to tow, does that make sense to anybody? So side winds can cause it, you ease off the grass, gas to, um, to, to, to bring it back under control. That, that's what handling the combination means. So the question is, you're planning to tow a caravan. What will help the handling of the combination? We've got anti-lock brakes, power steering, breakaway cable or stabiliser. And we want to get rid of two rubbish answers. So could you tell me which of those are absolute and utter rubbish, please? Which of those two answers, which of those four answers give me two rubbish ones adverse camber yeah i'm sure it's a really good thought which ones would you get rid of as absolute and utter rubbish and i'll see if you've got rid of the same ones as me it doesn't matter if you haven't though so long as you haven't got rid of the correct answer Okay, so the two rubbish answers that I got rid of are anti-lock brakes and power steering because anti-lock brakes won't stop that from happening and your power steering won't stop that from happening. So we get rid of those two questions. We've all of a sudden got a 50-50 chance of getting the answer right because it's only out of two possible options now. You've made the theory test so much easier. Does that make sense? This is something you can do with lots and lots of questions, is to get rid of the rubbish answers. So now, does that make sense? Put some yeses in, if that makes sense. Two rubbish answers, we're left with the two possible, that we've left with the two ones that people are getting mixed up with. It makes sense, fantastic. So the next thing is to think about the words safest option and having a bit of knowledge here, like through my course, will really thank you Ak akmot thank you i'm sorry if i said your name wrong okay so the two two possible options we've got left we're going to think about safest option and i want to know what they are so we've got breakaway cable and stabilizer who knows exactly what both of those are and who doesn't know do i need to explain them i imagine that i do but let me know put a yes I know what they are and put no, I don't know what they are. I need to have enough people saying I don't know so that I know to explain it to you. Lots of people don't. Let me explain. I'm going to make it super easy for you. And I'm just under 250,000 likes. Isn't that awesome? 249. You don't know. Let me explain it to you what they both are. So look at that picture of that red cable with two attachments. One attachment attaches to the car, the other one attaches to the caravan's brakes. Breakaway cable fits to the brakes. Say that out loud, it would help you to learn it. If the car and the caravan accidentally break away from each other, what could happen is the caravan could roll down a hill and it could crash into people and things, causing injury, death, damage. What a breakaway cable does is if they accidentally break away from each other, the cable will snap 
and put the brakes on the caravan and the caravan won't roll away. Does that make sense? Put some, put, put B for breakaway cable. If that makes sense, a breakaway cable fits to the brakes in case the break away from each other. A breakaway cable puts the brakes on if they break away from each other because otherwise the caravan could roll away causing injury, death, damage, yet yeah, awesome. So um, I wanted to say something as a breakaway cable fits to the brakes. It's so dangerous. If that break, if they break away from each other, it's so dangerous that um, you have to have a breakaway cable. Okay, you have to have one. It fits the brakes of the caravan. You've got brakes already in your car. You would put your foot on the brake pedal in your car and your car wouldn't move. It's this um, on these wheels. It would roll away. Okay, so it puts the brakes on on your caravan. You can't control your caravan when it's not attached to your car. So the breakaway cable fits to the brakes on your caravan. And you have to have one, otherwise you could kill people. I've seen caravans break away from each other when we've come out of caravan sites. I've seen it more than once, okay? Do you understand that now? Does that make sense to you now? Does that make sense to you now? Maybe double tap the screen if it does because I've got to 254,000 likes and I'm very, very excited. Now, a stabilizer, let's talk about what a stabilizer does. A stabilizer, a stabilizer looks like that metal bar in the picture above you, above my head. And it's a metal bar that fits here. It fits between the car and the caravan and it will, you'll see it here. OK, and it keeps the car and the caravan more stable. It stops this from happening, keeps them more stable. So just say the words out loud. A stabiliser keeps them stable and put S when you've said that out loud. A stabiliser keeps them stable. You're not in my classroom. I can't see you. Um, so all these comments help to know that you're with me and we're doing this together. So put an S if you on, if you can remember. Stabiliser keeps the car or the caravan stable and say it out loud. Just like you for the likes. Just the same as stabilisers on a child's bicycle will keep the bike and the child more stable. Well, the, these metal bars here, that's a stabiliser. It will keep the bike and the child more stable. Stabiliser on um, a caravan will keep the caravan and the car more stable. Does that make sense? Yeah? So the, let's go back to the question. The question was... Um, The question was, you're planning to tow a caravan, what will help the handling of the combination? And we were left with these two options. What will help the handling of the combination? Is it break away cable or stable eyes up? What will help the handling of the combination? You know the answer now, don't you? You know the answer now. And you're absolutely right. It's a stabiliser will keep them more stable. It's a good idea to have a stabiliser. You have to have a breakaway cable. It's a good idea to have a stabiliser to keep them more stable. Does that make sense? I love sharing that because that's something that people are getting wrong all the time because they don't understand. They are memorising the answers to questions. They're memorising so they're not getting it right in the actual real theory test. So I love that I can got 333 people on here and I hope that you all understand now that a stabiliser keeps them stable. A breakaway cable is if the car and the caravan break away from each other and the brakes come on the um, caravan. Let's go through another question. You're approaching traffic lights that have been green for some time you should 
Let's get rid of two rubbish answers. So we're going to, yes, Sarah Lou, awesome. Uh, so you're approaching traffic lights that have been green for some time. What should you do? <clears throat> Let's get rid of two rubbish answers, guys. Two rubbish answers I want here because don't go straight to answering the question. If you struggle with your theory test, you need to go through this technique. Get rid of the rubbish answers first because otherwise you could be putting a rubbish answer as the correct answer by mistake. And you don't want to do that. You look at it later and you think, why did I do that? Why did I say that? So you're approaching traffic lights that have been green for some time. You should. What is? What are the rubbish answers? Awesome rubbish answers, guys. Awesome coming up with the rubbish answers. The rubbish answers are, I've put um, the same as Akmar, um, the same as me, Shirley, the same as Jamie, is uh, accelerate hard and break hard. They are complete and utter rubbish answers. They're complete and utter rubbish answers. Um, we'll get rid of them. They don't exist. We won't look at them again. And now you've got a 50-50 chance of getting the answer correct. Isn't that awesome? 50-50 chance of getting it right. So you're approaching traffic lights that have been green for some time. You should. Now you're going to think about what is the safest option. What's the safest thing you can do? when you're approaching traffic lights that have been green for some time, what's the safest thing? Is it be ready to stop or maintain your speed? Shroom, thank you, and Akmart, thank you. So many roses and gifts today, I really appreciate it. Thanks for the likes. And more likes than I've ever, ever had before. So you're approaching traffic lights that have been green for some time. You should. And the answer is definitely be ready to stop. It's not maintain your speed. The answer is be ready to stop. doesn't mean you have to stop. It just means you have to be ready to stop just in case. That's my two-step question technique. So get rid of two rubbish answers. Think about safest option. And that should help you to answer loads of theory test questions. The two aren't mutually exclusive. You're always going to look at the safest possible option. That's going to be the correct answer. Although, be ready to, be ready to stop. It should be the answer for Anything you do in driving, you should always be ready to stop. I've included this technique because there's 1.9 million question tests taken. The official government figures say there's a 47% pass rate. Thank you, Corinne. 53% failing is way too high. We've got lollipop. Thank you. Thank you. Why are people failing? Can you let me rest my voice? for a moment and you put in some comments about why you think people are failing the theory test. Give me one second, I'll be straight back. I'm back. English isn't their first language. Anxiety, not putting in enough practice. Booking when they're not ready. I know. How many people say to me, my test is tomorrow. I'm not ready. Help me. How can I help you? How can I help you? Not understanding the questions or rushing through. Absolutely. Yeah. You're not good in the video clips. That's because you haven't done you haven't done enough learning. The video clips are super easy if you've done all your learning first, all the learning, then practice questions, and then video clips, and then you find them easy. Memorizing instead of understanding. Overthinking is a big one, isn't it? 
loads of reasons why people are failing their theory test confidence. They're memorizing the answers to practice questions, not the content. Yeah, not putting in enough practice. All sorts of reasons, test nerves, dyslexia. Yeah, dyslexic, Maddie. Awesome, all kinds of reasons why people are failing their theory test. And all of those reasons are responded to in my course because I can teach you to pass your theory test. You know I can. If you know that I've taught you anything, just put a yes um, or the letter Y in the comments if you've learned anything while you're with me. Because a lot of the theory test is super easy. It's just those extra few questions that you need to be able to pass. And if I've helped you just answer one extra question, then you know my course will help you. Theory test course has been created for you. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely comments. Thank you, guys. So I'll do these and I'll keep on doing them so long as you put comments in. 270,000 likes. Like I say, more than any. Of, I, think, I think my maximum before was 230. You understand contraflow and withflow because of me. That's fantastic. That's what I'm here for. If you need step-by-step -step help to guarantee you're going to pass, then go on to the course. Uh, you'll be able to buy the course on payday. Awesome. If these are enough for you, I will keep on doing them. I put together worksheets, to video tutorials, fact lists, all the official DVSA questions, then there's case studies, anxiety techniques, and more. So you're 100% prepared to pass your theory test. It's had way more than 5,000 passes so far. It's only 34.99 if you sign up now. Let me show you what's in the theory test course and how you'll go through it to guarantee you're 100% test ready. Go to the introduction first, so you've got a really good understanding of what's expected in the theory test and how to go through the course. There are 14 different theory test topics. Let me show you what's in the accidents topic. You can download and print off a worksheet to fill in if you want to. You can fill it in while you're watching the video tutorials. Then you can listen to a fact list before you go and have a go at all of the official DVSA practice questions for that topic. When you've got all of the questions correct, have a go at the mock test for that topic. And when you get 10 out of 10 in the mock test, move on to the next topic and go through all of the topics in the same way so that by the time you get to the case studies and the full mock tests, you'll find answering the questions easy. The best advice to give someone who's got their first test in a few hours, I can't do that, Natalie. I don't know what you've done and what you haven't done to revise. Just do what you can, okay? Trust what you know. That's all I can say at the moment, okay? Trust what you know. Thank you for the likes. Keep them coming in. Um, pop on tonight, Natalie Jane. Let me know how you got on. Um, trust yourself. Read the questions twice. Don't rush. Um, if you suffer, suffer from anxiety, I'm an NLP Master Practitioner and I've got techniques to help you get rid of anxiety so you can go to your test feeling calm and confident. There are techniques in the course to help you score well in your hazard perception test. There's techniques to help you answer any multiple choice question. There are free bonuses. There's a hazard perception course for free, a hypnosis course for free. Top 10 reasons for failure, top 20 hardest theory test questions, uh, both for or both ebooks for free. That's if you sign up while I'm live. I know it will help you. £35 worth of bonuses will help you as well. You only pay once for the course. You use it for as long as you need to use it. It'll take you between two and six weeks to go all the way through it. You only pay once, use it for as long as you need it. You quickly see, you will very quickly see and hear how to go through through the course. Um, here are some people that have been through it already. Um, by far the best theory teacher I've seen. Passed my theory yesterday, thanks for your help. Passed yesterday using so many of your techniques. My daughter passed after going through this course. I'm loving the course. Who on here is on the course? 
Does, do you know of anyone who has run out of time with their theory test before? No, I don't. There's lots and lots of time to take it. Unless, unless you have special needs, then, um, which some people do, of course, um, then you'll find that you've got loads and loads of time. Delicious, I'm loving the course. Thank you so much. So lots and lots of people are on the course and getting on very well with it. I created it so I can help you. I finished the course yesterday, so Catherine, awesome. Have you passed five mock tests, one after the other, with a good score of 47 and above? And if you're struggling to do that, and you've done everything in the course, that's when you get in touch with me. Danielle, you've just started. Link the course, please. Uh, there you go, it's linked there for you. Um, Any other comments? I'm loving these comments. You've read the question before more than twice, but still failed. Well, have you done the revision before? Um, before D Y six. I can't read your um, your link name. Sorry, but how did you do all the work before? The you, the emails are automated, so I've had. Loads and loads and loads and loads of people have got it today already. So you check your junk. It's always, um, Aishams, it always is either you don't put the correct email in or it's in your junk. Always, 100% of the time. Um, there's always one or two people say, I haven't got it, and you always have. But please go there. Don't don't ask. I can't help you on here. There's nothing I can do. I'm not tech. tech um, I'm not the tech team. So please go there. you get it. They'll sort you out straight away. So it tells you at the top side of the screen how long you've got left, says Shelley. Good good um, comment for someone who's taking it for the first time. You always know exactly how much time you've got left and you get more than enough time to do it unless you have learning difficulties. Thank you. Helping each other, that's what we're here for, isn't it? Lucy, Hannah, you've got mine tomorrow. I've really tried to revise this time, hoping for the best. Uh, how have you revised? All you can do, do what you can do right now. Stay watching my live. I might help you with a couple more hints. Um, yeah, May, how can you get the course? I've pinned it there. But it's always, always, always at the bottom left of your screen. Um, a, the, there's a little gold link um, there. If you click on that link, it will take you to buy the course, okay? So always that gold link there. Click on that link also if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You only pay thirty four ninety nine if you sign up right now. While I'm live, Aishams, please go to that link. I can't help you. I want to help you, but I can't. Um, it's, it's just something you're clicking wrong. That's all. There's loads and loads and loads of people using it. So please click on that link and don't, don't keep asking me because I can't help you. It just makes me feel bad that I can't help uh, while I'm here. Give you the support that you need. So those people are my support team and they are there to help you. Only 34.99 while I'm live. You passed, awesome, awesome. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to me, don't forget to follow me. Uh, my name is Annie, I am an ADI, I'm an approved driving instructor. I'm also on the official register for driving instructor trainers and I'm a theory test expert. Stay with me because I'm going to be covering owners and keepers and then super safety systems oh i want to finish before 12 so let's hope we can get two more lessons in i will get i'll rush through the other bits so i can get two more lessons in for you um, i'm a theory test expert i'm here five times a week helping you to pass your theory test making theory easy for you um, if you've got your theory test coming up look at the comments because there's some awesome comments going going in um, to help you with your theory test. Thank you, Melissa. Um, I have been awarded Most Innovative Driving School for my course. I'll pin it again there for you. I've been awarded Superior Achievement and Excellence for my driving school. I run a driving school based in Cheshire. I'm really proud of those awards and I'm even more proud of the fact that my course has the is guaranteed to have the most updated questions and he guaranteed that because the DVSA have looked at my course and they're very happy with my course and they've given me all the updated questions, the most updated questions. And they have um, 
they will they uh let me know when the questions change here's somebody that's been through my course and then we get on to the next lesson hello annie just wanted to say thank you my daughter has adhd and dyslexia so she passed her theory today on her sixth attempt all thanks to your classes my daughter bought your course and watched your tiktoks they all made a difference and really helped she's over the moon she has passed thank you isn't that awesome i am proud of my awards i'm even more proud of the fact that dvsa have looked at my course and are happy to keep me updated with the new questions but i'm even more proud of comments like this one whoever struggles with questions about the registered keeper of a vehicle thank you for the likes i've got 287 can we make it up to 300 that would be a massive uh, leap for me getting up to 300,000. whoever struggles with questions about the registered keeper of a vehicle just put a yes or a no in or me or something some kind of comment in loads of people saying yeah i do okay let's go through this question i'm going to make it easy for you well, who is legally responsible for ensuring that a vehicle registration document is updated? Is it the re registered vehicle keeper, the owner, the licensing authority, your insurance company? So pop your answer in. Shell, that's an awesome um, thing to do. Put A, B, C. C or D in the comments. Put I, D, K if you don't know the answer. And I'll help you. I'm going to make it easy. Paige Talbot, you're getting well ahead of yourself. Okay, so this is a vehicle registration document. This is a document that comes with the car that you will buy, okay? So it comes with the car. And there's information, lot, lots and lots of information in this vehicle registration document. Like, date first registered, the registration number of the car, the previous owners of the vehicle, the registered keeper of the vehicle, the make of the vehicle, the engine size, the colour of the vehicle. All of those things and more are in this vehicle registration document. It's all about the vehicle. Let's not mock people who are not getting it right, please, because I just would have to block you. This is a safe place to get things right or wrong. So please, let's not mock people for getting it wrong if everybody got it right there'd be no need to, for me to be here would there okay so notice on here it's got the registered keeper of the vehicle is on this is in this document so i want to talk to you about the registered keeper of a vehicle and the owner of a vehicle do you know what the difference is are you sure what the difference is between a registered keeper and an owner just put yes or no in the comments and keep your oh, 295,000 likes whoa <laughs> more than ever you do, do you know what so many people don't know the difference so many people memorize the answer to the question but don't actually know the difference so other questions or questions in your actual theory test you'll get wrong or you potentially get wrong. So I want to show you and explain to you and get help you to feel confident about the difference because the difference is super easy. It took me a long time to write these handful of slides that I'm going to present to you now. It took me a long time because I wanted to make sure how can I make it super, super simple. Okay, so let's talk about the owner first. The owner of a vehicle is the person who pays for it. Okay, just put a capital O if you know what I mean by that. The person who hands the money over, that's the person who owns the vehicle. Just put the letter O 
the owner. If you understand that, I will carry on. You might not understand until the very end of this lesson, but just do you understand the owner is the one who pays for it? Karen Millwood, awesome. Brilliant. The registered keeper is different. The registered keeper is the person who uses or keeps the car. Just put RK for registered keeper. If you understand what I'm saying, that the registered keeper uses or keeps the car, the regis registered keeper is the one who drives the car. You don't have to understand anything else right now, just that the registered keeper drives the car, uses and keeps it. I've, I've got more slides to come. Awesome. So the registered keeper is not necessarily the legal owner. It might be, but it's not necessarily because it's two different things. Owner and registered keeper are two different things. OK, two different people, maybe the same person. Let me explain about the registered keeper. The registered keeper, the person who uses and keeps the car, is the person who is responsible for the car. The registered keeper is responsible for tax and MOT and insurance. The registered keeper is responsible for keeping the registration documents updated. The registered keeper is responsible for making sure the car is roadworthy. The registered keeper is responsible for paying fines. OK, does that make sense? The registered keeper, the one who's using it and keeping it, is responsible. I passed my theory after studying your course. <gasps> Princess Aisha, that's fantastic. Thank you for that. And congratulations. Thank you for popping on and letting me know. So the registered keeper uses, uses and keeps the car. The registered keeper is responsible for the car. Now the owner and the keeper of a car may be the same person. There may be two different people. Let me explain what I mean. I'm going to give you a couple of examples. Okay, so when my son Lex, he's now he's 26, is a driving instructor now. Um, but when he was 17, I bought a car for him to use. I was the owner of the car. I paid for it. And when it was sold, I got the money for it. Yeah. But he, Lex, was the keeper of the car. So he was the person responsible for paying for insurance and paying for fines and etc etc so i owned it he was the registered keeper does that make sense put a yes in if that makes sense i've got another example for you if you've got an example let me know if you've got an example let me know so i bought a car and a year later my daughter rosie started using the car as well but i still owned it okay cool so um, when I was about 19, long, long time ago, I worked for the National Health Service. And what I did was drive around to people's houses to care for them. The National Health Service bought a car, so they owned it. I used it. I was the registered keeper. My name was on the documents. I had to, <laughs> I, um, I was responsible for insurance and MOT and tax and um, making sure it was roadworthy and keeping the registration document updated. I was responsible. But when the car was sold, I didn't get any money because I wasn't the owner. Does that make sense? Anybody else got a, a, an example? Oh, I've just bought a Nissan Duke. I've just bought a new car a few weeks ago. I bought it, I paid for it, I am the owner. I'm going to use it, I'm the registered keeper as well. Okay, so owner and registered keeper might be the same person. Owner and registered keeper could be two different people. Does that make sense? Put a big uh, yes in, a capital yes in, if that makes sense to you. Vicky Thompson, enjoy. 
So remember those details. The owner pays for it, but they're not responsible. The National Health Service were not responsible for anything. They just got the money when the car was sold. So who is responsible? Who is legally responsible for ensuring a vehicle registration document is updated? The registered vehicle keeper, the owner, the licensing authority, your insurance company. I'm going to get rid of two rubbish answers and I'm going to get rid of those two. I'm going to get rid of the licensing authority and your insurance company. Um, good question, um, Miss Will. I knew somebody would ask me that when I said that my son and my daughter used the car. No, he was the main user. My son continued to be the main user um, and he was the registered keeper um, of the vehicle. Only you have one registered keeper, one main user. So who's legally responsible? Is it the registered keeper or the owner? Put the answer in and give me loads of double tapping the screen because I've got 303,000 likes. Um, who's legally responsible? Is it the person who is using and keeping it or the person who paid for it? Who's legally responsible? You know the answer now, don't you? No problem, Miss Will. I knew somebody would pick up on that, so well done for picking up on it. As soon as I said it, I thought, oh no, that question's gonna come out, but it's a good question. Shows you were listening. Okay, you're absolutely right. The registered vehicle keeper is the person responsible. They are the person using the car. They're the person that's keeping the car outside their house or in their driveway. They're responsible, not the person who paid for it, not the company who paid for it, for example. That's my owners and keepers lesson. My name is Annie. I'm an ADI. That means I'm an approved driving instructor. I am an audit trainer. That means I'm on the official register for driving instructor trainers. And I'm a theory test expert. I'm here to make theory easy for you. If you think if you feel that I have just helped you to understand what the owner and the registered keeper of a vehicle is, thank you, Queen, um, then you know my course will help you. There's loads and loads and loads of hints and tips and lessons exactly like that. I've spent thousands of hours finding out what you struggle with and creating techniques and lessons and explanations to help you learn and remember easily, to help you learn and remember forever. That's what I do. That's what I committed myself to doing years ago when I had this idea that I needed to help all you guys. Let's go through a question. Which sign means minimum speed? One of them means maximum speed and one of them means minimum speed. One of them means the most speed you're allowed to do. One of them means the least speed you should do. I know spicy kissy, I haven't, oh I have got A and B, yeah I have got, it's A or B, it's A and B at the top, I couldn't see that then. Which one means minimum speed, minimum, small, okay? The smallest speed you should do. And you're right, it's B. B means minimum speed, A means maximum speed. Okay, so don't worry if you don't know. Maybe screenshot that, cut me out of the picture, and then keep looking at that all day so you can learn something, okay? Thank you for your comments, Tom. Keep keep um, keep the comments coming in, guys. Everybody comment because this helps. TikTok really, really like me getting lots and lots of comments. So keep putting the comments in. A means maximum, B means minimum. That you're helping us out to learn forever, Spicy Kissy. Let's do another one. What does this sign mean? So keep putting your comments in, whatever they are. What does this sign mean? Do you know what it means? A really good way of doing signs is to not look at the meanings first, see if you can get it without looking at the meanings. Some great answers coming in, keep them coming in. I've mixed up my cards and I wanted to show you my cards, but I don't think I'll be able to, I can't find it. Keep putting them in. Oh, 
There you go, I found them. Because what people get mixed up with is whether this means road narrows or end of dual carriageway. Does that make sense? That people get mixed up with those two. I'm going to show you the difference. I'm going to show you the difference. Okay, so look at this sign here. This is the one you were looking at. It's got two lanes and both of those lanes go narrow and then forward again. So two lanes get, so both lanes get narrow. The road narrows on both sides. Can you see that? This one means the road gets narrow on one side. This means it gets narrow on both sides. Does that make sense? Yeah, double tap the screen or give me a like, or give me a yes if that makes sense. Now this is the end of dual carriageway sign. Notice the difference. There's two lanes that both go inwards, yeah, and then you end up with one lane. This sign means dual carriageway ends ahead. And this sign means road narrows ahead. Okay, so notice the difference. Can you notice that now, guys? I want, to, I want you to get that right every single time from now on because I can see why you get it wrong, some people. But can you see the difference? Put a yes in the comments if you now can see the difference. Put a yes in the comments if you now can see the difference between those two signs. Loads of yeses coming in, awesome. Let me just go through them very quickly. Road narrows on one side. Road narrows on both sides. Dual carriageway ends. Could I write the difference on the screen? No, obviously not. The slides are created another time. So yeah, maybe you write it down. Just draw a simple picture. Let's go through super safety systems. So um, anti-lock braking system and electronic stability control. Let's go through those now. Who has a good understanding and who doesn't have a good understanding? Let me know. Danny, awesome, awesome. It's easy when somebody explains it, isn't it? It's really, really easy. Um, what's hard for me to do is just suddenly go and change my slides. I can't do that. I can't do that. It takes me... Hours and hours and hours and hours of my own time just to make a few slides. Hours. Um, so I can't just go and change them. If they're not very good, then I'm sorry. You have a good understanding. Awesome. This is going to be my last lesson. So it's up to you if you have a good understanding whether you stay with me or not. But let me explain it to people who don't know. So anti-lock braking system and e -lock electronic stability control they are both safety features in a car okay so after each slide i want you to put okay or yes or a thumbs up or something so i know you know what i mean so they're both safety things in a car the car helps you the car your car automatically helps you to stay safe with these two things they are safety features features in a car. That makes sense. Yay! Our Iachefai. How do I say that? Congratulations. Yep. Yeah? Brilliant. Let's talk about ABS first. Have, has your, thank you Shell Pool, has your, has your driving instructor explained ABS to you? Has your driving instructor ever explained anti-lock braking system to you? Let me know. No, maybe not yet. Today, awesome, brilliant driving instructor. Okay, so maybe some of you have, maybe some of you haven't yet. Okay, anti-lock braking system. You, I would talk about that in a driving lesson, when I'm delivering lessons, when we're doing the emergency stop exercise. When, st when the learner is stopping very suddenly. Because when you press the brake pedal very suddenly, your wheels can lock. If your wheels lock, then you're skidding, aren't you? Does that make sense? If your wheels lock, 
you'll be still moving, but your wheels wouldn't be turning, so you'd be skidding. Does, does that make sense? Keep the lights coming, and brilliant, brilliant to get up to 320. Yeah, absolutely. So if you press the brake pedal heavily, your wheels can lock, and then you're skidding. Yes, Chelsea, Faith Cook. Um, so what ABS does is it detects when your wheels are about to lock. To stop your wheels from locking, you need to come off the brake pedal. If you come off the brake pedal, you might hit the person or thing that you don't want to hit. So what ABS does is it, it makes your brakes go off and on hundreds and hundreds of times. And that stops your wheels from locking. Does that make sense? ABS, anti-lock braking system. Your brakes will automatically come on and off hundreds of times. And that is, um, that stops your wheels from locking. When your wheels lock, do you think you'd be able to uh, steer? If your wheels were locked, do you think you'd be able to steer or not? Put a yes or no in the comments. No, Kira Ward. Awesome. No, Little Blue Kathleen. O2, China Rose. Yeah, you. if your wheels are locked, you can't steer. But if anti-lock brake system is activated, you can steer, okay? Because the brake's coming on and off. So what you'll feel is your brake pedal pulsing. So when you've got your foot on the brake, your brake pedal will feel funny. Okay, you must keep your foot firmly on the brake pedal. You must do that because ABS is doing the job for you. And the other important information is that you can still steer while you're braking. If you're skidding, you can't steer. If ABS is activated, you can still steer. Does that make sense? Put ABS if that makes some sense to you. Just put the letters ABS for anti-lock braking system and allows braking and steering, if that makes some sense to you. Amazing. That's what I'm doing here. That's why I'm here, making theory easy. So you can steer. Yeah. Yeah. That's with ABS. Now, another safety feature in a car is... ESC, Electronic Stability Control. I don't know about motorbikes. I don't know, you'll have to Google that, Riley. I don't know anything about motorbikes. Um, so ESC, Electronic Stability Control. It's a newer, it's a newer um, feature. So if you've got an older car, it won't have ESC. A newer car will. Don't ask me any more information than that. I'm not a mechanic, okay? That's all you need to know. You need to know what ESC is. Nintendo Pups, awesome, okay? So ESC, let me show you what ESC does. It detects a loss of stability. So look at this red car. Can you see this red car is about to drive around a bend? Yes, this evening, Robin, yeah. This red car is about to steer around a bend. And it started to, it has started to steer. And you know that it started to steer because the wheels have turned. Can you see that? Can you see the red car has turned its steering wheel um, to drive around the bend? You can see that, brilliant. Now what's happened, there's a problem. The problem is the red car, the steering wheel's turned, but the car's still going straight. That's a problem, isn't it? If the steering wheel is turned, but the car isn't going with the steering, the car is still traveling straight, it has lost control. You are not in control of the car, yeah? Put C for control if you understand what I mean. The steering wheel is turned, 
but the car isn't going that way. The car is still going straight. So the car is moving in a straight line. The car wheels are steering to go around a bend. Brilliant. You wouldn't know that. You wouldn't know that was happening immediately, but the car does know it's happening. The car, ESC, knows that's happening. And what ESC does is it puts, it'll put brakes onto your wheels, but different amounts of brakes onto different wheels. So it might put a bit of brake on here, no braking on here, and quite a lot of braking here and here, for example. So ESC would bring your car automatically under control. Sarah Lou. Okay. So when ESC was helping you, that light would come on your dashboard. That light will come on your dashboard when ESC is activated. The light will stay on all the time if you've got a problem with your ESC system. Okay, so it will come on for a couple, a few seconds at the most if ESC is helping you to drive safely and it will stay on if there's a problem with your ESC system. Peng Estinga, yay, awesome. So both ABS and ESC, they both use wheel speed sensors. Both of those things know how fast your wheels are moving. But ESC also uses steering angle sensors. So it knows, ESC knows how much steering you've put on. If you put that much steering on, it would expect the car to start going in that direction. If it doesn't, it knows you've got a problem and it will help you. Does that make sense? Good luck for tomorrow, Tag. So, what does it mean if the ESC indicator lamp lights up while you're driving? If it just lights up, does it mean the ESC system has activated? The ESC system has a fault? The ESC system is running a routine test? Or the ESC system has turned off? Which one of those is the right answer? Good luck for tomorrow, L Hazel. Pop your answers in. You know the answer now, don't you? Loads and loads of answers to come in. Remember what I said about if it comes on and if it stays on. Two different things, two different questions you'll be asked. This one is it comes on, it lights up. It's not staying on, it's just lighting up momentarily and it means the ESC system has activated. It will only stay on for a couple of seconds, okay, while it brings your car back under control. That's super safety systems. 1.9 million people are, uh, are taking the theory test. 47% of those are failing, uh, pa passing. 47% are passing. That means 53% of people are failing. People are failing because they don't um, understand the theory of driving. They go through questions and answers and they don't understand the questions and answers. So they get them wrong in the actual theory test and getting them wrong and failing again and again and again becomes embarrassing. It's certainly frustrating. It's definitely a waste of time and it's absolutely a waste of your money. I'm not a scouser. <laughs> uh, drive you cannot book your driving test if you can't pa pass your theory test so what I want to do is teach you to pass your theory test and that's why I do these lives and um, it's Hassan I will be doing these lives every weekday morning between 9 and 12 and at half past 6 in the evenings when I can when I can get back from work in time to deliver a lesson. And, and I've created theory test course as well. So I do these lives and I've created this course and I put together worksheets, video tutorials, fact lists, all the official questions are in the course and case studies and anxiety techniques. You will be 100% prepared to pass when you go all the way through it. It's had more than 5,000 passes so far and it's only the price of one single one hour driving lesson. It's only 34 99 if you sign up while I'm live.
Let me show you what's in the theory test course and how you'll go through it to guarantee you're 100% test ready. Go to the introduction first, so you've got a really good understanding of what's expected in the theory test and how to go through the course. There are 14 different theory test topics. Let me show you what's in the accidents topic. You can download and print off a worksheet to fill in if you want to. You can fill it in while you're watching the video tutorials. Then you can listen to a fact list before you go and have a go at all of the official DVSA practice questions for that topic. When you've got all of the questions correct, have a go at the mock test for that topic. And when you get 10 out of 10 in the mock test, move on to the next topic and go through all of the topics in the same way so that by the time you get to the case studies and the full mock tests, you'll find answering the questions easy. If you suffer from anxiety, thanks Maricha. If you suffer from anxiety, um, I have put techniques in the course to help you get rid of those. I'm an NLP master practitioner. I'm, I'm a master practitioner of hypnosis. I have got 320,000 likes, says Robin, and I am so happy. That is about 100,000 more than I've ever had before. I've had, yeah, awesome. 320, wow, that's just amazing. Thank you so much. Um, I'm finished in about two minutes, guys. There's techniques to help you get rid of anxiety. You go to your test feeling calm, confident, however you want to feel. Click on this link. If you need extra more help than a couple of techniques in a course, there is a whole course about test anxiety in this link. So go to the link and you'll see my... I'll show you. Go to the link, you'll see theory test course. You'll also see how to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You'll also see Driving Test Nerves course, um, a link to that as well. So please um, have a look at those while I'm live still. There's, you can, there's techniques in the course to help you score well in your hazard perception test. There's techniques in the course to help you answer any multiple choice questions. And the free bonuses you get if you sign up while I'm live are a hazard perception course for free, a hypnosis course for free, top 10 reasons for failure and top 20 hardest things theory test questions um, ebooks and that's if you sign up while I'm live. Those bonuses are worth just under £35. You only pay once for the course. You use it for as long as you need it. I can't see any questions because I've got to be blocking the way at the moment. Um, you'll very quickly see and hear how you're going to pass as soon as you start to do the course. Thank you Zara. Uh, thanks uh, so Susie Woggy can't pass my, I practice non-stop but I can't seem to pass, says Ray Clark. What are you practicing? What are you doing? Where do you see these likes? I don't know, some people can see them. Are they at the, to are they at the top of your screen? Yeah, the, the very top of your screen, next to where it says theory test practice, top left. Thank you, my scorpion. You practice non-stop but can't seem to pass. Ray Clark, what are you doing? What are you practicing? Are you just doing mock tests? When I go online, all I can see is people saying, do mock tests and mock tests and mock tests and mock tests and mock tests. And that's the advice that people are giving. That's wrong. That's not how you learn. That's a way to memorize. And some people will pass the test by doing that because they've memorized. And then when they finish the test, they don't know the theory of driving because they've memorised it long enough to pass a test or they've guessed the right answer. So you, you, before you look at questions, you want to either read the books, have a one-to-one -one with somebody, speak to your driving instructor, or do this course, learn the stuff that you need to learn before you go through, before you go through the questions. I'll read you a couple of reviews. Put some questions in. I'm finishing by 12 and it's 12 now. So uh, keep putting questions. I'm going in a minute. I need to eat something. You do mock tests and write it down. And if that's not working for you, then you need something else, Ray Clark. It's a good thing to do, but but do you need to do something else if that's not working. Um, so go through the course. Please don't fail it. The course has been created for anybody to help them pass it or um, speak to your driving instructor and ask them how you can learn um, properly not the question to the answer not the answer to the question 
about the topic. Hi Annie, thank you for your amazing course and live videos. Past my theory on Saturday with 47 out of 50 on the multiple choice and 58 out of 75 on hazard perception. Thank you for all you do. Eddie Hall, Monday to Friday, yes. Hello, just wanted to say thank you. I'll slow down. Hello, just wanted to say thank you for creating your theory test course. My fiance is dyslexic and I just and just passed today after using your course. Highly recommend to anyone who is struggling to pass their theory test. Um, please do reflective studies. I am not doing any more lessons, I'm afraid. Um, sorry, Eddie. It's so, not, not, not Eddie, is it? It's uh, somebody, user and um, Abdul. I'm not doing any more lessons because I've been live since 9am and I have to go out now. I have to go and have a breakfast and I have to go out teaching people to be to, to, to drive, okay? Because I'm a driving instructor and I do work. This is my free time, three hours every morning and I can't do any more because people have paid me to um, do a driving lesson. So I'm going to have to go and do that. Um, I'll be back on tonight with some, oh, I'm sorry, I'm live every morning um, and this live and yesterday's live will go into YouTube. Click on this link and you can sign up, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, if you click on the link, you'll also see a link to my course. Everything is in the course that you could possibly need to pass your theory test. There is nobody who's ever got in touch with me to say, I've done all of your course and I have failed. There is always somebody popping onto this live and saying, I've, hi Eddie, that I've take, taken your course and failed. And they haven't. They're either just spamming me, is that the right word? Or they've signed up for a course and not done it. Because I know exactly what's been done. I can go onto the course and see um, what you've done. So nobody's ever done it all and failed the test. That's never happened. Um, I spent years finding out what you struggle with. I've spent thousands of hours designing techniques and lessons and explanations to put into the course to help you and I make sure I put in stuff. How do you learn, guys? How do you learn? People learn by watching, by reading, by um, doing. Um, how, do, how is it, you, what do you like to, how do you like to learn? Elsie, awesome. Because I've made sure there are worksheets so people can do you can fill them in. There's video tutorials that you can watch and you can hear. There are facts lists that you can read. So you can read, you can do, or you can hear, you can listen to them. There are mock tests that you can listen to or you can read. There are games to make learning fun. There's a response to however you want to learn that I put to watch to watch you. However you want to learn. No, I'm not um I'm not in London, I'm in Cheshire. Definitely not reading for me. I learn by listening and watching Seleka. That's an awful lot of people. You like audio, so the video helps, doesn't it? The video and the audio um, fact list will help you because that is audio. Videos are audio as well as visual, aren't they? So it's only 34.99. If you sign up in the next 20 seconds while I'm live, and um, when I'm alive again, don't forget to follow me. Don't forget to subscribe to me. When's my next live lesson? I will be live at 6, I'm just checking my diary. I'll be live, hopefully, hopefully home in time to be live for 6.30 tonight where I'll go over some questions with you. Then I'll be live again at 9 till 12 tomorrow morning where I'll be going over some more lessons, some more techniques, some more questions where I, Annie Winterburn, will be making theory easy for you. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for, I've got 100,000 more likes than I've ever had before in this live. So I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Um, that's awesome, awesome, awesome for me. Um, and I, and I, know, I know that TikTok will like that. I will like that. Okay, so I will see you. Hopefully I will see you tonight. If not, I'll be back on tomorrow morning. Don't forget to follow me on YouTube. You can do that by clicking on this link. Um, because all of my lives this week will go into YouTube. I don't do that every week, but all my lives this week will go into YouTube. I was one mark off for FA only. Please click on that link. Click on that link. You will pass next time. I promise you. Uh, <laughs>
I'll prom I'm not answering that, Mr. Leonard. I promise you, you will pass next time. All you've got to do is go through that link. Uh, go to that link and um, you will pass next time. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.